And what do you make of this uh, fascist leader who's having a lot of success in the French presidential elections? What's he doing? Have you not, have you not come across this story? <laughs> no. Right, this is one of the big, big political so, stories. He's got a far right that got nearly 20%. He's a far right fascist leader and he's uh, having uh, considerable success in the French elections. I don't think we should be asking hard questions like this. Not something you've got to I, I, I'm getting scared. There's all sorts of bad stuff going on in the world that we don't know about. You know yeah. I mean? But we know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're better off not knowing because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, Carl. Ah! <laughs> Fair enough. Ah! I can't argue with that. Oh, oh man. Uh, war. We love a ruck. Yeah. We built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. Or we used we to be. We are good. We used to be good. I don't yeah, know no, we're very good. We're, good. we're good. We're very good. I mean, we've, I think we reached our peak with Churchill. Probably that's probably our, our greatest uh, hour, our finest hour. Well, according to him. Yeah. Well, he should know he was there. He should know. And he liked to drink, didn't he? He loved a brandy. I'm just not afraid of a drink. He liked to. He'd get pissed up, and he'd no wonder he'd fight him on the beaches. He'd fight him anywhere. Yeah. See, there's an example of a posh bloke. It was like I was saying, he'd lead you into battle. He'd have a weapon too. He'd go in there. He didn't. He didn't sit back. I mean, when he was old, he did. But nothing wrong with being posh if you're willing to go and you know get stuck in. What do you think, Carl? Um, is it as scary though? I mean, imagine if if he was rougher sounding, and he was on on the front line. And, like uh, he went, he went. You fucking little cunt! I fight you on the beach. Uh, look, see me down in Brighton Monday. I'm gonna fucking smack your head in, you little fucking German cat. Like that, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a morale boost. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other point of one, isn't it? That he was. Those speeches were for as much as morale as uh, information and and defiance. You don't want to feel like the the leader of your country could glass you if you got on the wrong side. No, of exactly. Him. It's got to be. It's it's got to be rules under war, hasn't it? I mean, that fair play has got to come into it as well. And what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for my dad. I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true. But no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but but so, for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored. <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station. Yeah. And got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that 12 off the air? <laughs> um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's, uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. Yeah? So what, 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 what are they messing with? It's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Carl. Every year, 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year and they would propose laws and everyone else would vote on them and that was their obligation they were obliged to be one of that 500 if they'd be like jury duty called up and then they had to propose their ideas and then the rest of the citizens f voted on it now if you're in that position all right you're called up what rules and laws are you instigating you might go right i, I want uh i want an egalitarian society i want freedom for people i don't want slavery I don't want any sort of oppression. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave here. Eh? Mm. You, you weren't, though, because you were being paid and you were free. 
So, definitely. What were you mean? I wasn't free. I was on like from from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. They yeah. not, They wouldn't go. They go. Well, I didn't have any actually, choice. Actually, um, actually, Mr. Jackson, mm. um, I, I'm I'm mm. thinking of leaving no. your employment. No, um, the years. money's no good, no. and uh, I don't like the uh, the dwellings. <laughs> no. They didn't have that choice. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did. The only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's <laughs> not. That's not. That wasn't. No choice. That wasn't. That wasn't the lack of choice given to most. But the slaves. slaves, the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't an option for them. It wasn't like they could no. go and, well, I, I could oh, get no. a better gig on the but Sphinx. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, you're not saying anything. You're saying <laughs> absolute drivel again. Um. ...of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms. That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy see. helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, their powers are resrictive. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid well. They they're under exactly resourced. They, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think somewhere. they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. they're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What but do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at, they That's were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because, I, I'll tell you this, they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah. My <laughs> fellow is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, hasn't it? Like, cowboys and Indians, they didn't have Playstations and Tupac then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's, you know, that's the world, and it? It's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right, in a way, in his, in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of Even, like, you know, dinosaurs, look at them. They, they cause a lot And of then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound no, like no, a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened, it always will. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't try and change it. Yeah, yeah. Just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're <laughs> little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just gonna be like Grand Theft Auto, innit? I'm just gonna go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Mm. So I think you've got to have some rules. Right. Which rules would you repeal that already exist, that you don't like? Uh, it's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> 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 so fly tipping, you'd what, like to see more fly tipping. What, what, what do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house and just like you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was it was a good way of recycling. Now they say recycle, but we're not recycling. It's just being put in a bin. So you'd like to see more fly tipping? <laughs> no, not you see. You, you That's see, all we needed. Is, London, more this rubbish. Is, this <laughs> is the problem. You see, look what's happened. Look what's happened to what I've said. It's been taken the wrong way. Right. I'm not saying tip. I'm not saying chuck your bin bags out the door and let crisp packets go everywhere. I'm saying if you've got old furniture, you should be allowed to leave it outside your house. Without the council going, move that, it's dangerous, someone's gonna trip over it. Mm. Well, if right. they trip over it, it should have been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? What? Huh? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over them and smack their face in. What if a woman with a couple of kids in pushchairs has to go out into the road yeah. to get past and your get, piece of junk? And get crushed. No, because I'm, I'm leaving it, I'm not leaving it on the, on the pavement. What well, you said you were, where are you leaving it? Sort of outside the house. Right. In well, your front uh, garden, well, who's gonna take it from there? That's just thieving. No, sort of just Where are you leaving it? Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because uh, so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind teeth. person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything? Definitely not. They're, they're better on the feet than some people, because they're more cautious, aren't they? 
So- Make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second hand shop or because send they won't, it to they a don't come, Steve? Honestly, they, they don't. They I've will. I've called up people and they're saying, "Yeah, we'll be there in an hour." And I say, "Right, I'm going to put it out on the street, and are you going to come and get it?" Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. Suddenly, just the council goes over the past place. <laughs> on the floor, <laughs> bloody noses. Then the council said, "I call them up. Do you want to shift it?" Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You have to stay with it. Suddenly, I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But mm. you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? <laughs> Coming up, Carl's going to teach us all about Sigmund Freud. No, we're not, we're not doing that. Well, no, yes, we, we are. are because last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look. But uh, I didn't find him that interesting. So, but that's not. But this is this is what irrelevant. I mean. This is what we were talking about. You you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn. Yeah, some I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that. <sighs> I gave him. I had a look at the website. It, it just oh oh sigmundfreud.com. Yeah, he started that. I just didn't had he? a look. I just I did a search on like famous quotes from philosophy. quotes. Brilliant. That get you everything you need. A quote. That's well, I, don't, a, I don't need to know his history. That sums I up just, a man's life work. A quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill will go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund didn't really have any any sort of catchphrases, is what yeah, you mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sound bites. Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press. <laughs> Brilliant. So you well, haven't bothered to learn about him. Well, you didn't even pick up a book. I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then, I was. But I don't know if I am because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did look at some of the things that he'd said and the one. Do it now. Do it now. What? Right, what have you learned about Freud? Okay, here we go. This is Carl educates Ricky and Steve. Number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember <sighs> was that he said a baby. You, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? It looks well happy. Uh, it has enough, it's full up, uh, it goes to sleep, it's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> that's what happens when you're older as well. That's all I remember from all the things <laughs> that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how like, it's, it's like- Absolute. Now to be fair Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you No, I'm not having a go at Freud. Him, you know. not, I mean, Freud has been discredited on, on some issues and we've moved on with experimental psychology and-, and But and that's, that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow- so what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. Um, I don't know, you- Well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's see not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh Christ Almighty! But but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by uh, by his by his work. So unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, he's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once, and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. Not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote, so they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick. Next, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're not, in, we're not in charge of it is what I'm saying. That's it, nearly as good as let's go to the beach. <sighs> Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of well, hearing about this. Oh, we're gonna get some quality thinking here. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. No, he was saying, uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world and it. We're all getting old and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What 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 we're trying to do? 
this is what I'm saying about we don't like people to get old. We're always saying, oh, we can change that face, we can lift your chin up, we can put a wig on you. Why are you saying, so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same. It's just getting old and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's gone a bit bald. So it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. <laughs> Treat the That's world no, like you, a head. You've actually come up with one there. Um, Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this. Because when I was out with you, I don't believe it's going to be weird. Whatever you say, no, Carl. No, when, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is um, what I tend to do because I nearly got mugged once. Act you mental. what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah, but I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers, and uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. It was quite late one night, mm -hmm. and he came up. He said, uh, "I want them trainers." I said, "You want them?" I said, "I worked hard for these." I said, how dare you come to me asking, and I, I got a bit livid, and I said, <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at me like, oh my god, he's got a right one here, and he left me. Were you acting mental, or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified, though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you, clearly, you're a brave man. So what did the you say? I, ju I just... I just went. I just went a bit mad. I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And you know, went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it. And you know, I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I, did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, or I just think? left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. A good advice though. Just that mental. Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> Got me nerves! When a American. whole nation there, <laughs> reduced. <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, name dropping. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, cos that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? <laughs> that, you, were, you, were, you were sort of... Your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went, she? Uh, went there for Christmas, and, um... Um, there's loads of them there, because that, that's like really close to America, that's like <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type It's thing, exactly right? like that. Yeah. So it's, it's I think that, that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So, but I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. <laughs> <isn't it>? But <laughs> they were going on. They're selling all the brochures, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we were going serious. on about the uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um... Brilliant. The, uh, the 9-11. The 9-11. That's what they call it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is, so it's like people who say 24-7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans say that. working my ass off 24-7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed, though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do yeah. that American accent again? Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, yeah. the 9-11. Where, yeah. where are you from? <laughs> what? What? Uh, can we find <laughs> America? <is> that? <laughs> that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Sure. But <laughs> can Carl, you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't. I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's he's not going <laughs> to. Have you been to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me again. Got any news? Um, yeah. <laughs> went went for some food. Yeah. Um. And it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we sure. went for some steak, <laughs> and we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse, yeah. right. and um, sat down, had, had the steak, and that's huge, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left, and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave, we didn't have much money for a tip, do you know how over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was, it might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But... He didn't have to do that much, we didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money, so he brought us like the main course, and I don't know, a sure, couple, sure, couple sure, of Diet sure. Cokes. And um, anyway, left them the, the, the 60p, Yeah. on the way out, and he comes running over, excuse me sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean, yeah. it's outrageous. What did you say? I said alright then. Just your thoughts please on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sissons no, asked some probing wanted, questions? Uh, no, I thought it was wore a burgundy tie. I thought that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See that? 
That's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage. <laughs> And showing, you know, what a, a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that. And, and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Cause on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send what, what, a card- What would you- what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion but on the vicar's chair, what- what- how would you like it? Just, just little- little things in the card, I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when- so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah, or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why? Have, why has everyone got to be so sad about I someone agree. dying? No, what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102, and um, what you know, I mean, it's sort of like. I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the uh, the funeral uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday. And there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the queen mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired that, and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just people what are we doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tell <Tully> Tuppies, no. <laughs> the Queen Mum. <laughs> oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> oh oh dear. dear. I mean, yeah. I, I know. I'm sure you know. I don't know much about her. I don't know if she was a great woman. And obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies. But it's like it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing from hours upon hours to see her yeah. lying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um… I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do these? You, do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, ju choosing the, you know, Eye color. Well, this or, is the, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Yeah. But um. I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when w when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why it, was she? It was a very. So like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right. horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have Is there using a horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of le <laughs> Right? And, um, oh, that's great. I Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking <laughs> for it? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. 
Where did he get an um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's been saying, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going cattling, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door! I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, Harvey! Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's They could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record, let's play a record and come back to this, because the story's gonna just unravel and unravel. It's gonna go for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It deeper and deeper, it's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. I mean, I come from the West Country, I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big, sort of, like, orange carpet and a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really- I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. We got on to, uh, um, we got on to genetically, like, genetically modified babies, but and somehow- And then Carl we... started doing a story about someone with a horse, and then he got on to, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, yeah. the mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you- But, but well, what I'm on. trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand- What, so what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her. Bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yep. Yeah. Right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a. I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they they get didn't caught? have it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget, well I dunno, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making idea. idea. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said can I just take some snippings off them? And uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And uh, got some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank god for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they, they, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. And it looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a you central know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> Telling that. <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was walking through London. Come on, sixty-four, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, how like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know Daddy, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, 
it was a bit- what we were talking about, it was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right. Now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> so- Come you, on, work with him. So you take it to your doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now, the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So, then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat, you know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my man went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the f weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch th sticks? <laughs> it's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely <laughs> Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, what, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Whoa. Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh, God! Ooh. But am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. Queen Mum's uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a. I, I don't quite understand why there were so many people there um, who were like getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset, crying and stuff, and. You know, you can lose someone who's, like, related to you, and you don't- you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and- and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was- wasn't it, like, miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right? I was sat watching this with Susan. Twelve Hannah. hours queuing. Yeah. It never got to and twelve hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, mm. How you know, long is a queue when they're just, like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of, like, st you know, stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah. But- Again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. it was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done. Remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um, and don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, they, they cut him up. Yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, what they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the, the people, like, one to- Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, no, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to, well, to well, sort of make him like into a martyr. A little bit like that. I've, like, I six can vaguely see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But, they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <sighs> And it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just head. say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to to cut down the queues. So don't phone in. He's not suggesting we should have done this. He genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or or you know, he thinks this is a good idea. So can just I just throw a thought? Che Guevara was like a, a powerful man. He did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next mm, one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. 
Cause she's, she's had about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, the, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I've just <laughs> thought, right? <laughs> what? Instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley <laughs> <laughs> and wheel her past everyone else? Running. So uh, yeah, you could have you could have some students on Rag Week. They can combine <laughs> it, like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along the, uh, the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful, <laughs> right? As opposed to the chopping up. So sure, right. right. But just just an idea. Just I apologise now. If anyone's yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended? I'm sorry. But kind of what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on. But what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, really... I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. What's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. like you might get into them. It's sure. like you might have them and go, "Oh, this is all right." Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Um, exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier, and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You you didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well. Don't want to do that. It's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's who's a drug addict. It's their own fault. Is your it depends, your doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean you can be an addict if I don't know something? I'm trying to think of a nice way that. Well, you most might people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and 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 go. Let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but. Yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose it's the, uh, the, the action no. in the Listen end. to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there. Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow from mammoth? the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth, a man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If we'd have, if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we that's mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you do hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head, and his head was in the basket, and he went, count how many times I blink. Is it, I, is, Carl, uh, Carl is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak when we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's Seriously, good? Do we are good to bring back, back mammoths. Prehistoric <laughs> These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'd probably be offended, elephants, to be honest, Carl. They'd probably be offended. No, but, I'm si but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, yeah. could it? Well, really? but, but 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 the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought it had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, "Oh, f think about it before you do it." But <laughs> with a with a airy elephant, it's it's not going to. Not a concern for you. Would oh, you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a queue, Nothing right? Impresses no, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and you know Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah, yeah, problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I won't close around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, as the words man moth. Came into your head. Well, how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For just for the moment when you thought that they cloned a man and a moth. I pictured. Um, what kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's? Head? Just a little head, little man head. Right. What What was his face? What did it look like? <laughs> just he just was like a bit like a bit, bit shocked. perplexed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like so, it was like he'd been he'd been he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep, no yeah, he'd woken oh. up. He just he just went in for to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said we've he replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah, just is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little was it a little boy or a man? Little man, right? Okay, and he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you if you uh, went into hospital, 
and, and they'd done something. Uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, quite the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you make of, uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more, a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, yeah. uh, and he was asleep. Or something, oh, yeah. and people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know England's people, not nodding off on a on a park bench, which is a bit daft because <laughs> they were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, so was, that, looking so after was this the eight, was this the sixteenth century you went back to? What do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know wherever he was, if he was in what? like a park somewhere, yeah, they were, like they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure, do he I probably undercover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and know, he might not, he might not have been there at all. So you know, it was you know, so yeah. he would probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going up. I think up there's and enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, okay. you're happy then. Yeah, as long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. yeah. What about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit when I when I go on holiday, like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, I don't see it happening. No. You been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about. Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If yep. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay. It's really good. What is it's your not view? an act. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, Is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone, clone cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? I no, think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature, which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I well, I think they're cloning for organs. I you know, they, they just grow them for the. You know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you like make something else. That's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Great. and finally... We're doing the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. it's, their own it's, right. it's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough if, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting? You think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. Thanks right. very much, Carl. Apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like uh, what do you make of that? It's a huge thing, and you just you, you live on it, and it's I mean in theory. How big, how big is it? It's um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a luxury town in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger, and, yeah. No, but actual... Liners are bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the biggest then, yeah. Cos my mum told me that there was one that, that, was, that was that big, that it had, like, rough areas on it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, 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 oh. God. <laughs> Oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a... we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer area. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's They fantastic. steal your tyres. A how? ship so big that was rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they are huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, because, I mean, think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the- all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. Coke cans, and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think- if you got a load of boats on there- Yeah. Problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you leave on a boat? solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Berger? Noah. Oh, Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd like to see you, um, living in- in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it- it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's gonna be more water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, 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 that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that, like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they say, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube, and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube, yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no, uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, well, it, it will freeze up. The water's well, gonna get cold again, because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put- <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. Not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm- that, you see that I'm using me fables. Imagine <laughs> a world- <laughs> Use your brain instead! <laughs> imagine the world, imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's- we're alright, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> oh my God. Thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? That's amazing. Can you say it again? Say it again. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but a trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not gonna get any joy out of that. Right. But, if he's lucky, Yeah. The fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about, sort of, Planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not. I don't think it's directly well, it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I, I think he means that future generations. But yeah, if the, if you yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But that's. Yeah. But you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, but I'm I'm sort of guessing. He, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment mm. was in planting that seed. Oh, we, we it, have... It's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees. You know, you plant the tree, as you say, and you may never see the beauty of or the benefit of that tree, but other people will. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life, and he's got a legacy and all that. But so by I... the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right? Now there, they have motorbikes people flying round on them, mm. P people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. Mm -hmm. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're mm. whizzing around at high speeds. A lot mm. of deaths there. Yeah. 
um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see th those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying whoa, 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 where an elbow. You're saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because it there's makes flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers everywhere. So with mm. death comes beauty. So that's another metaphor, you can have that one. <laughs> That was one of the most now, tortuous things I've ever- that was extraordinary. But look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let him yeah. finish his point. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Right. London, councillor with his clipboard, need a speed bump here, I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. Mm. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not you very see good that all ones. It's stuck to a lamppost with a elastic band round them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look nice. He's not nice, the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is, is the point is Some 15 year old got run down and you're disappointed <laughs> at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. <laughs> Fella lost his head here. Geraniums? So, Geraniums? For fella lost bloody head? Well, Fucking that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the areas. No, what you're but saying? if an area's nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, <clears throat> you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. Because they go, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down yeah, there. This is so complicated. Flowers. So now what you're saying is because an area is grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it, in the course of doing that they knock people down, but then flowers are put up, which then makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. <laughs> well, they're cute to getting out of their cars to, to put down flowers. And, <laughs> and they get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Or other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fellow outside our house who had a lamppost. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off because no. the way you said it. But, but that's the <laughs> thing. He had, a, he, he had a. Oh God! There's a man. There's a guy in the house. He had a lamppost. He had a helmet on, but his head come off. So oh. you're saying that because in that one instance the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached to his body, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. How far, how far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night and it's just too much. Very important point, you see. We give people crash helmets, we give them, you know, seat belts, we make them wear that, right? Do you think that's right for a start? Do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one, but right. then if, if, if you come off a motorbike and you hurt your head and you didn't have a helmet on, then you can't sort of go, well, they should have had speed bumps there. Yeah, I didn't realise we were going too fast. Don't forget, we're not just protecting him, he could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him, oh, if he doesn't want to wear a crash, I mean, let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, we're, we're over the top in this country no, but when you, it comes so you're to saying, that sort of If you're thing. saying, no, if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet, let him not wear a crash helmet. He wears, he doesn't wear a crash helmet, he comes off his bike, he smacks his head in, he's a vegetable. He's like that, home, sitting at home, like that. And yet the two little kids come to you, you're in charge, don't forget, we've put you in charge of society here, and they come to you, two little kids, they go, <sighs> President Pilkington, what? why did you let my daddy wear the... I not wear the crash helmet. I didn't. We paid, uh, we put leaflets through the door. We had yeah. adverts on the telly sunshine. Yeah, but, but it's why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted, it's, it's not the way we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's an helmet knocking about? No, he's, he's just, he's a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. <laughs> why did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Hey, where's your mum? Oh, mum, mum, mum left when he kept, he kept going on about not wearing a crash helmet. Right, I'll oh. put you in a home. <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. <laughs> yes, but this is interesting though because you you were particularly callous to that little four-year-old boy. He seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. Yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, dead to vegetable. vegetable. He's dead. Uh, He's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crash helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want, if you wear a crash helmet or not. He wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. 
This was your- you were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. We have heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he- is he he's younger? A bit, he's a bit younger. Is he, is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington. Uh, my brother's crying now, because you shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Well, he won't listen to me, because I'm not in charge of society. He didn't listen to me. Yeah, but it seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be honest. No, he did listen to you. What did he do Because you made a, a new living? rule saying people don't right. have to wear crash helmets. Right. What, and he listened what, what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain oh, things. Oh, so he has got some common sense then. Well, enough, yeah. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, but he can, can be bothered with helmets. I haven't got a daddy. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, you are cruel to this kid. You it's are just, mean I, this, all to I'm this saying kid. is, there should be a leaflet. <laughs> I don't even know how he got in number 10, this little kid. The thing is. But he's got in, you should have at least a courtesy to listen to his point. Forget all, I'm, I'm sick and tired of having adverts on the telly. Don't smoke, wear an helmet, slow down, watch your kidneys, look after your <laughs> I liver. I haven't seen that one. Now, no. I don't know why. <laughs> Why can't they just put a leaflet through saying, hello everyone, use your common sense? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, That's what I take because some people president. don't have common sense. Some Everyone's got common are sense. Fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, they it's not my fault. That's then. why there's, yeah, that's not why there fault. is a government. If we let, if we let people, they'd be fucking idiots. They'd be eating turkey twizzlers and fucking watching Big Brother and X Factor but all day. They are and they're letting their kids run riot in but the street. What they are doing. Some families do just eat turkey twizzlers. Yeah. There is little knobheads on bikes playing out till God knows what exactly. hour. Exactly. So it's happening anyway. But yeah, but that's no argument, is it? It's happening anyway. That's no argument, Carl. It's what we've talked about here. Social responsibility. The reason people get into politics is because they feel it's their obligation to change those things. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah. I don't- I don't- that the people who don't wear an helmet, sort of, they do themselves in and that's cleared them off. That's one problem sorted. So you think- you- you're, you're being Darwinian. You're thinking survival of the fittest. The yeah. idiots will suit- but they don't. Because it- they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. It's the, you know, uh, a very good example is, um, okay, we've talked about it before, you know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous. We know now that smoking gives you cancer. But why is that still legal? And yet people know that and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy. And yet they still eat more. They get depressed, they're eating more. They know that they're, they're going to be constipated for a year and a half, but they're still shoving in chocolate cake instead of carrots. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop them? Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard. And you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Can't grab Ricky, there's a cupboard over there. <laughs> you've got to take some responsibility, haven't you? Now, if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> Listen, uh, are you uh, disappointed by the nation that uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St George's Day? 23rd. Is St George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, no that's... Are, you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St George is the patriot of England who uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, or you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll are be that like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years' time. It's just weird. <laughs> I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops would be shut mm. because it was like you know the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money. We'll open the shops. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's Is that good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. <laughs> Because the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that shop shut, uh, and you couldn't get aspirin and stuff. Exactly. Certain things. Yeah, nightmare yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. 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 So that's right. Yeah. And pubs didn't open oh, till twelve. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? Evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. The pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl. You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> um... Cause you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
<laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah, you'll live longer. Yeah, it's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. It doesn't do you any good. What about where, where do you draw the line there? Though? What if you say lose a finger, pop into work? Um, depends if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And. You know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. All right. <laughs> Carl, this is important. This is, um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. It's so <laughs> Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um... You don't, you wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got, like, deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are deaf. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so... You're all right walking about behind them. Yeah, but if they see you ahead of you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and... They keep the spiders... Lizards yeah, and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got a bit of the, both the best worlds. So you're worried, though, about in the future, the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. You concerned yeah. about that? Yeah, well, there's a load... I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that front page or? <laughs> There's a load of sparrows somewhere. No, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> load of sparrows somewhere. No. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> uh, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook. Suddenly got like a load of messages coming in at the same time about one topic. And when that happens, you sort of go, this, this, this is it. Like Richard Branson, that's what he says. He says he gets loads of posts, loads of phone calls, and he hasn't got time to go through them all. So he waits until the message gets to him or something. It's like, if it's important, you'll eventually find out. Anyway, I can't, I can't look at every message you get on Facebook. But suddenly, there was the same message from loads of different people. So I thought, right, this, this must be important. What is it? And I clicked on it, and it was a bit of monkey news. Um... I don't know if you've seen it. I'll play it here so you can see it. It's this. This little monkey comes round the corner on a motorbike. He grabs the kid, runs off. And everybody was like going, this is terrible. What is going on? There's a monkey kidnapping a kid. But I don't know if I can turn the audio up so you can hear it. But if you hear it when it first comes round the corner, to me, that sounds like a siren. And I'm wondering, I don't know where this is, it's sort of Asia or something like that. I'm wondering if this is how they're dealing with the lockdown. Like I say, if you play it back from the beginning, right, you're hearing a siren there. That bike's got some sort of siren on it, like, and that bike, it's a proper little motorbike, that. A monkey-sized motorbike. So I'm wondering whether in Asia, to deal with the amount of people ignoring lockdown they've got monkeys doing the doing the rounds and making sure people stay in and i think that's what's gone on here he's come tearing around that corner there down this alleyway and he's found this family who should be at home should be behind doors and they're not they're fanning about in an alleyway and the way he's ang i mean the, the way he comes tearing down it's like he's caught these before he's annoyed with them he's livid i mean he's, he's probably gone for the kid because he knows that if he texts the kid the adults will follow. Um, the way he just like gets off his bike again, like how many times have I told you? I mean, a little motorbike's a, a, a giveaway. That's a monkey-sized moped that, that it's been issued with. Little monkey law enforcers. I suppose it's good because you're not going to argue with it because it can't speak English or, or wherever this is. 
So it's just going to go in and try and do the job, shift the people. And I think that's what's uh, I think that's, that's what's gone on here. Um, but you see, I see things like that, and I think, hang on, is that starting to creep in here as well? Because all this talk about loads of PPE kit. It's like they, they've got loads of it now. There's like a mask, a face mask, a thing they wear on their head, a thing all over the body. And it makes you wonder if uh, in our hospitals we've got little, you know, little monkeys walking about the wards helping out and you've no idea because they've got that much PPE on. You, you can't see the little chimps out under there. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, help's help. And uh, I suppose, uh, you know, when times are bad, everyone's got to... Um, Everyone's got a chimp in, you could say. Anyway, monkey news. Alright, this is Carl's favourite song, Killing of Georgie. Yak speaking. Just want to ask if you've got any ideas for future compilation themes, then let me know at youtube.com slash yak. Cheers. Uh, apparently, um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another... Yeah. Two million? Yeah. Why, why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like, when you're <coughs> on a plane? They're like £2.50 <coughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What, what is it doing there? Why have a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It's pretty and... boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts. Um, yeah. Boxes of cornflakes everywhere, just what you imagine. Yeah. I so is it more, this is where you it. might be working? <laughs> this is where you're likely to work? Possibly. There was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> Cordon Bleu, what's that? It's like that... a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the... You know, in the building and stuff. Well, you didn't tell anyone? Or... No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? Stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck in a printer? I don't know. <laughs> what was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! Brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You've had to what what did you get sacked for? Messing about in a um, the, back in the in the car park round the back. Yeah. Right. Uh, there was there was a grid, and uh, all the concrete had gone funny. So when it rains, you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right. And I got in. Do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while? Oh out? yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them, and pushed myself out into this lake of cement. No, of I, water. It was full oh, of water. water right, it'd been right, raining. Right, right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And I was like... <laughs> and you were so, stranded in a leak. So someone said, oh, he, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this... <laughs> 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 a lake in, like a, in a trolley. And he said, get back in. I said, Would you say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks. I said, I'm, I'm, it's too deep. I can't get out, you'll have to pass me something. And he said, I'm not passing you nothing. He said, you can get out of there and walk through it. I said, I'm not, I've got my trainers on. Probably the same one. Yeah, you've actually. risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, I'm not getting these wet. I said, I, I said what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. He said, the grid's blocked. Now get out or you're sacked. I said, well, I'm not getting out. He said, right, you're sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Only about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of it. <laughs> Just think. I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? So, back at the Chosen 500 in ancient Greece, right, you're one of them. What other things? We, I, when... I like that saying, the one about, um, do to others as you'd like to be treated yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good one. Pop that on a leaflet. 
Pop it through the door. But you seem to be doing a lot of leafleting. That seems to be <laughs> your entire governance seems to be guided by <laughs> popping leaflets through doors. And I get a lot of leaflets, so I presume the rest of the country does, and it's not always working. So maybe yeah. sometimes you've got to instigate something a little bit more strong-minded than fucking leaflets, my friend. Yeah. Maybe you've got to make also, a couple of laws. You've got to every up. individual can go, how would I want to be treated? Um, <laughs> well, I'd want someone to throw cake at me. Yeah. Because I'm a greedy bastard. I would want right. someone to steal my telly. I'd, I'd probably start on the way you look. Right, go on. I'd just, I'd just say, right, you know, make an effort, tidy up your house, and I'd, I'd have some sort of... Um, I'm poor. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You can still tidy up. Can we get better houses, then? Because... Well, look what? after the one that we've let you. Yeah, get get rid of that old mattress that's in your garden there. <laughs> Clean the windows, and then we might give you a nicer one. At the moment, you don't deserve anything nicer. And that's what I'm saying. You've got to be honest with these people. Wake them up. I like that. Sure, like you've got to be honest with them. You've got to wake them up through, through the heavy leafleting campaign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you see, the problem with some of what you're saying, Carl, is that it's very hard to, uh, to enforce that in yeah. law because it seems unjust and unfair. You, you can't really start legislating against people's looks or whether they want, I mean, you, you have to keep your mean, house tidy. I mean, who decides how tidy it has to be? It's the tidy police. I mean, that's yeah. a strange. Well, hold on, though. I, I don't. I am. Um, I am. Um, I like wearing sort of these these um, denims. It expresses who I am, and I like wearing a beard because I, I just think it's natural. I don't like really like shaving, and um, yeah, I, I I like this sort of smell. I like this smell of bo. That's um, who I am as a person. So I don't, how can you impose that on me just to be part of society? Who are you to infringe my rights as an individual? I, I, what do you want out of life? Well, no, I, th I think I just like to say I, I don't. I don't want to conform. I don't want to just shave and wear a suit and right. you know I keep myself to myself. And I like to uh, just grow a beard and um, and eat and eat porridge with my hands. Okay. I'm not hurting anyone, so I don't know why. I don't know why I have to conform to that society. Well, I, I, there's nothing I can do for you. Mm. You're yeah, waste, wasting my time. Really. Yeah. Although I do feel ill, I need to um, I need to go to hospital now. Um, mm. So uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to hospital now. If that's all right. Is, is there is there is there care for me? Well, what's yeah. up with you? Um, I've got I've got um, diseases from like eating with my hands and there's like, things growing in my beard. Right. Um, so we just we clean that up for me now. No, because it's all been brought on yourself. Well, no, but that's that's irrelevant. A lot of people bring things on themselves, but you can't just like ignore them because it's part on it's about society. That's well, so how do they learn then? How I don't do know why I'm being punished for being stupid. How do they learn then? Well, I don't understand well, why I've got well, to worry about well, you. I've got well, I've got proper ill people. Well, you, you had a kid whinging at me this morning because his dad was a mong. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about the the little fella planting a tree that he will never sit under. He's given that to a... the next generation. Okay? Now, big discussion about donor cards. Of course, there's no reason not to give your kidneys away after your death to all your organs. They're no, no good to you and you'll be helping life. It's, it's, it's perverse to me that you wouldn't want to donate your body to a, a worthy cause after your death medical research, whatever. Um, you agree with that, don't you? Um, well, you know how I feel about it a little bit. I don't like the idea of certain bits. Why not? What does it matter? Just because there's certain bits that are really personal to you, aren't they? No, there's not. What, what, what bit is more personal than another bit to you? Well, like I've said, my eyes. They're my eyes. They're See the stuff I like. Yeah, Now, but what happens if they, someone else has them, and, and they start looking at stuff I don't like? I don't you, like the idea of that. But that's ridiculous, because your eyes are, <laughs> they're just bits of tissue. Then they haven't got no, your... No, but we don't, we don't know, because they've found out know. there's something called a cellular something or other that I've told you about, about the person who had right. some sort of operation and ended right. up lacking yellow biscuits. I've yeah, told but, you about Yeah, but that's bollocks. It's the same you thing told with us the about eyes. it, but I dismissed it as bollocks well, immediately. Well, the, Not just because you said no. it, because it was intrinsically bollocks. No. But it could work the other way anyway, where no. the person who has my eyes starts like looking at ants and insects and stuff. I might right, it's carry all bollocks. On. Again, this is all bollocks. Got none of your memories, none of your thoughts, none of your reasoning, no, nothing of you, none of your personality. They're just a collection of cells that now have light going through them and making this new person see. They're a lens. Mm. They're a lens. That's all they are. Mm. So there's no there's no reason why, you know, this is the crazy thing, isn't it, when people started saying that they wanted their organs to go to a particular race of person, and, that, and obviously that's illegal. Mm. Um, also, it shouldn't be the choice, really. I think you should have that um, opting out, that you have to say that you don't want your organs given after, and if you die, then they assume that the, those organs are up for grabs, because there's a, there's a shortage. So what do you think of that? 
Like I say, uh, they can have they can have certain bits. They're not having the eyes. I, I think that's fair. Are they, what can they have the cock and balls? Uh, I prefer it if they didn't. You're saying no, no one's gonna have my eyes or my cock and bollocks. What ever. if the tables were turned? Yeah. What if someone said, Carl, you've lost your cock and bollocks in a terrible accident? Sorry, right, we put some flowers at the scene of it, it's brightened that area up. <laughs> but um we found a, a donor who's happy to give him give you his cock and bollocks. He's dead, but his cock and bollocks we kept on Would ice you accept then. them? They're, they're absolutely lovely match. Better than yours. Yeah. Bigger, younger. Yeah, go on then, I'll have them. You'd have so them? you would, so, you see, you'd have someone else's cock and bollocks, but then you wouldn't donate yours to someone but else. what about this? What if you, what if you discovered later, right, that the person who donated the cock and bollocks, right, was a sex pervert? <laughs> was it, was a homosexual sex pervert? I, I don't think, though, that I'd bother <laughs> looking into the history of these cock and bollocks. You it's not like, them. uh, you know... <laughs> you accept the willy-nilly, but what <laughs> if, what if you, you just found out by that chance? That was his name, that was his name, willy-nilly. That was his stage name. And what come on and and by chance? Yeah. How do I find out by chance? What's the scenario They there? say, well, the doctor goes, I should, um, tell you, and I, I know you believe in a load of shit about yellow biscuits and bollocks like that, so I'll just tell you in case anything goes weird, this was a sex pervert's, um, cock and bollocks, so, uh, if you, if you find that you're sticking these through letterboxes, don't worry, it's not your fault. It's where they wanted to have gone. That's, uh... Would it concern you if you accepted the cock and bollocks that had a past like that? Yeah, because the problem is, it wouldn't be that bad if I had his eyes. Right. <laughs> Why? Because then I'm seeing what he wants to see and- That doesn't and make any sense at all, no, Carl, but, but unfortunately, It makes no though. sense at all. Y y the match is wrong. The eyes don't go with the cock and bollocks anymore. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, something's gonna lose out here. Either the, the, the cock and bollocks, they're not gonna get what they want anymore, or the eyes are gonna be upset. <laughs> so are you scared of the idea to go back to your yellow biscuit analogy, the, the, the cock and bollocks you inherit, the, whatever the previous owner did with them- Lives on. Bollocks. That scares you, does it? Okay, there's one final scenario here, Carl. Okay. You've, uh, you haven't opted out, so your, your organs go to where they like. Now, unbeknownst to you, uh, there's a big weight in this, there's a thing, they've got, they've got all your details and you said, yeah, whatever, I don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know, would you, after you die, where it goes. You say, I don't, because you've said, you don't want to know. If you don't know, you have a lovely life. When you die, they can go anywhere. They can do what they will, okay? Now, unbeknownst to you, they have got it down. They've donated your ass, right, for use, um, to a gay rapist with AIDS, okay? So they are, they are saving a life there. So when you die, they go, right, we're gonna, it's still warm. Get that gay rapist with AIDS round here, because that's gonna stop him raping someone, give him AIDS. He comes round, he's straight up there. He's shagging you, right? It's, he, you're, you're basically saving a life, right? We're letting him die. Right? Sorry, okay. sorry, I'm confused here. What? Why is the gay rapist with AIDS got the arse. What's no, he's, he no he's, he's, he's still connected to Carl. They've donated the arse, so when, when Carl dies, the doctors go, right, we're gonna stop a, a terrible thing here. So the gay rapist can, can shag the yeah, arse? Yeah, he shags, come round, he shags Carl, gets out of his system and goes, phew, that stopped me. Yeah. Right? Okay. Right, so- So it's just Carl's disembodied arse on a- No, 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 it's the whole, it's the whole Carl. Oh, they go, Carl's so, dead. So they Carl, they Carl gets struck and he's having a heart attack, they go, free, <laughs> clear, they go, no, we've lost him. At 10.01, they go, oh, he's a arse donor. And they go, okay, get the, where's the nearest gay rapist with AIDS live? Next door, get him round here. They go, okay, the, the gay rapist comes round and goes, where is he? Right? He goes, there he is, right? So Carl is face down. Now they turn around, they go, there, there's the arse, you've got 10 minutes, then we got a bury I'm surprised you didn't know this guy was living next door. <laughs> so, the gay rapist gets on top, he goes, right, this is lovely, right? He's loving it, he's shagging you up. Right, now, this is the weird thing. The doctors next door, they go, okay, the gay rapist will be finished. Soon, um, and then we have to bury him. But we should inform his next of kin. They go, oh, it's Suzanne. They go, um, your husband's uh, uh, daddy's avatar. She goes, oh my god, go come round and just identify the body. Um, uh, I'd leave it a couple of minutes, but um, then <laughs> then come round. She goes, oh god, I'll be right there. So Suzanne's on her way. The gay rapist, right? He's he's pummeling you away, right? But you will not believe this. Oh my god. The movement and the way he's shagging you, right, has started, started your heart. <laughs> oh, wow. right, right? This is a stroke of amazing good <laughs> yeah, fortune. right? So you go, oh, oh, oh. um, he goes, ah, oh, right? He, right, 
has a heart attack, <laughs> right? And he flops down on you. He just like Ed butts the back of your head. So now you're both naked. This gay rapist is up your ass. He's dead, right? The shock is a, you go fuck me. How can I get out of this? Right? You wriggle. You fall onto the floor. So now. He's on the bottom, face up, you're on top of him, he's still in you. His cock is up your ass. you're sat on him, wriggling, Suzanne walks in, goes, Carl, what the fuck are you doing? She's heard about me being dead, and she, cause she's come to yeah, the hospital. She, yeah, yeah, she goes, and they go, he's in there, and she goes, he's not dead, I can see him. They go, oh, because it's been a terrible one. She bursts in, there you are, on top of him, wriggling to try and get his knob out your ass. right? You're sitting on a, a man who's dead, what do you say? I, I just say we got a John Booper. <laughs> Hard, isn't it, to imagine yourself uh, at a different period in time and how you would have reacted? Now, if you think about America in the 1950s, black people still very much second class citizens. You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident in which um, she was obliged mm -hmm. to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it, it became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, and am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops, you live further away than Rosa does because you've got a lovely big house where she didn't have a lovely place, she can't afford it. So you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this now, you've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you, maybe you've got on that bus as a privileged white man and she refuses to get up on your behalf. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. But why would you say that? Because you're thinking of the modern day car, you're not thinking of the man from the 1950s. Well, we don't, well, well, the thing is, well, we don't have to, we don't have to go back in time. Or, uh, we can go to a country now where you'd see an injustice, where you were outnumbered by the law of the land. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the to the shopping centre. we only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you because there's no one sat next to you down there? I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes <laughs> than the bus. I'll see you in a minute. It's not a big issue. I've done it on the train where I've booked tickets and they've ended up being different tickets. And I've gone, oh, I'll see you in an hour and a half. I've got an iPod. But it's, so you went first class and but she that's, was but in, that's, in the But that's luck. That's, that's luck. That's circumstance. One is, one is policy. Surely you can just see the difference between a principle and a bit of luck. Uh, but it's what you get used to at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not walking past them slapping them on the back of the head. I'm getting on and it's just that's where they sit, that's where we sit. Like men and women sit going into a separate toilet. Carl, let's put this just to, I mean, obviously this is too much for your head to, you're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people and they're- I'm the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go, if I'm driving, I'd go, Let's, lads, stop that, will you? If you're gonna be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day, it's the end of the day, we just all wanna go home. We've all been working. Right. Uh, he's not in your way, he's sat in his own seat, sit back, calm down, had enough. But, but what if they said, no, we want, we usually sit there, we want that seat. Would you think either black kid's a troublemaker? Or just, you, would you go, come on, just move, mate, it'd be peaceful. I'd, I'd go, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to move so this is calmed down? Or no, 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 you shouldn't say that. He doesn't, he, he doesn't matter if he wants to move or not. It's his right, right. not to move. Do what you want, then. If you want to stay there and fight your own No, no, corner. no, 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 no. he again. wants to stay there. Don't you have, surely you come, surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here and getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, alright? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. Alright? No, but that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But yes, but uh, Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, 
He's, no, no, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying well, about you Rosie. Know the full story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. <laughs> how did it work? I'll she sat on the bus. She sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. The middle section of the bus, uh, what, black people could sit there, but it was. Uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit, depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well no, actually this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Yeah. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up, it's my right to be able to sit on this bus, as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. Well, she lost in the end, didn't she? What do you mean she lost in the end? There's a black president. Yeah, but it's not because of her getting on a bus. That's oh. just because times change. Yes, in a way well, it is. I don't know. Because it she is. became a spearhead of the civil rights movement that was we spearheaded had a, we, by t Martin Luther King. But all those little things go towards change. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, of, uh, who's, who's been in a right mood. Might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's he's fed up, he's had, he's up to here with it. So, so she's pissed up there. She's she pissed up now. No, no the person the sat next to her yeah. might have even been a black bloke who's been working hard, and he's like, I don't want this. But it's interesting you say the that. The bus pulls over, the Be police are called in. But you say, this, it's interesting you say that, because in the, in the Rosa Parks incident, there were a number of other black men, all of whom did stand up. I think five of them were there, and four of them stood up, and she stayed sat down. So there was four people there who did choose the easier route, the easier life, and she stayed sat down, and she's the one who went to prison, and she's the one who's remembered, because of what she did on that day. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up, you know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause? Or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seems like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now that's fine, you'll always get people who do what they want and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand up, this is, this is the day I'm gonna do it. It's just happened to, she was fed up that day, she didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around me. law breaking all the time <laughs> and she's remembered now because she's she'd made a change about bus seats but when she got up that morning did she say i'm going to do that or has she been fly tipping before she got on the bus <laughs> <laughs> this is what i'm saying is she just is she just a, a no, you know a, no she's not a troublemaker she's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's, I, yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's oh. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't realise I had to, I didn't realise it would be this difficult. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was... Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right... Pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but, but what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand. What does she look like? Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, I know this respect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, all right. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse no, in No, no, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good way of making over weight. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings of them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've, been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three piece suite, sure. and a telly and that. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you that. No, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was walking through London. Commodore 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? Daddy, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. Right. First start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's. What, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit. What we were talking about? It was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right, mm -hmm. and Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to your doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my man went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. <laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh, life. Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh God! God. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. What do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry, and there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket, he's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. No, he's having a bit of good luck. Quite right. Right. Next one. Are Next you concerned one. that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's oh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, well we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> right, right, God. Well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> you've been in jail for four months. Yeah. yeah sometimes but, people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you despair. to you, yeah. Despair. Yeah. No, no, right? <laughs> yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate. And they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who he said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right, mm. in the back of the car talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the to that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting yeah. away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having <laughs> out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 
you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if- My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N, right? You are joking. No, she said, oh, you are, cause she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She thought, so she was being nice, <laughs> and I remember, like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? <laughs> like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, you, I went round- Do you think that's what? Yeah. Alright. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, it's, not, not, it's weird it. though, because no, hang on, some wait. people look from Cornwall use that like saying twit, so- if people well, listen in Cornwall. Do you know, I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well. Well, uh, I, I learned the, uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah. Um, Sorry. twat. <laughs> 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 For those that aren't sure. <laughs> I, I learned this at school when I was like <laughs> 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you know, <laughs> Carl would be a twit. That. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh, you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you know, yeah. but not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. That's great! Well, I can believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid do it. Yeah. And you know that. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 pull over, pull over, you're you, gonna bum at you. And he was saying this, that I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I've never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving, you know, I go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible word? <laughs> but he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> in China, you can only have, uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to, um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid, okay. as opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm. But if but it's someone who's, who's- Oh yeah, but then- So but social then, engineering you want to yeah, do Yeah, but then, but hold on though. Well, what you said then, if you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So it's who's deciding who who who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was, I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? I was brought into a poor family. No, no, I'm talking, I'm talking really poor. So, third world? No. Well, poorer than that? Poorer than no money at all? No, I, somewhere in the middle again. You've gone too far the other way. Okay, Why has so it always got to go the other way? Cornwall. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? <laughs> right. So hang on. So let's imagine Sorry. that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. And me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why um, not? Because uh, he's, he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was, it was t ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And what's... Uh, you meant to have 300 million tiny ones and he had one big one. It was horrible. I had to pull it out. It was like a leech. And, uh... And also, I've, uh, it was no I haven't, I haven't got a vagina, so there's no place Completely to put it. smooth down there, like an action man. Yeah, it was just that, like, I don't know, uh, but we, we love children, and, um, uh, uh, we wondered if we, we could, um, have a child. What do you do for a living? What, what do you do? What's your work? Uh, I'm a rapist. <laughs> right. And I dispose of the bodies. Right. Uh, oh, fill out this form. <laughs> I should have clarified a rapist murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. He does it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say. So, uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the body, said I hadn't made that one. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though I That am was a, our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't rape. I, 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 uh, I work in an office. He works in an office um, in, uh, in, uh, in the town. But so, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have, uh, we adopt a little 
a little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think. good parents. How, what's, what's that based on? Well, well we're like good people, on? you know, mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes. We're God-fearing people. We believe that um, uh, God is watching all of us and um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, he tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes he does, yeah, uh, particularly... Um, we, we've stoned a couple of homosexuals this week alone. It, uh, so we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, we don't joking. believe in God. We're um, we're a, a firm and atheist and believe that our time on earth is, is is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms, mate. All right. Uh, well, you filled but up. We've already we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black because right. um, we we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking again. <laughs> little joke joking from again. Us. We, want little joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um, Gay accountant. <laughs> Some would say the same thing. Only yeah. joking. Of I course. think I think there's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual. So we're we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Mm, so we we, we don't care whether you get a homosexual or a heterosexual. But um, I tell you, by the time he's 14, he will be as um, as queer as the ace of spades. Right. So you filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll pop that in. Get it processed. Right. Okay. But what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None. None really. No. <laughs> It's my job. You're happy. You're it's happy with us. my job to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we're living now. <laughs> oh! Oh, uh, God! We don't want a child. We don't want a child, actually. But do you know where we could buy a knife? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Yak. Hope you're enjoying this compilation. This is David Bowie's Starman. Halfway point of the compilation. Enjoy the second half. Cheers. Okay, start off with uh, race, a big political issue. Race, what do you think about race? We're just, we're just all the same, aren't we, at the end of the day? Good. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of us age better than others. <laughs> yeah? What do you mean? Uh, Chinese. <laughs> well, what do you uh, mean? They just... They age better than us? No, they, they, they age worse than us. What's that based on? Just when you see them. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know how old they are. No, but you never see a sort of a 35-year-old one. <laughs> what does that mean? You, you what does that 30, mean? You know, what do you mean you don't see a 35-year-old one? Right, we're in London, yeah? Yeah. It's a Chinatown. Yeah. So, I walk through there a lot. Right? And they just always look old. <laughs> yeah, but they might be old. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, why do they're you... Not. What is... <laughs> You can't say that, Carl. No, you see some that are about... Th about probably about 30, right? And, and I'm not having a go, but... Normally, when they're about 20, they're good looking. All you right. think they're all right? Yeah. See when he's 30, forget it. They just age overnight, it's like a pair. <laughs> what do you mean, it's though? Just, it just happens. What is this? Chinese people age very... That some of the oldest people... I think the oldest man in the world is Chinese, 120. Yeah, he, hundred... says, he says he's 120. It's probably about 40. <laughs> I'm telling you, fact. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not having a go. I like them. Keep themselves to themselves and that, they're all right. But so that's right. race, that's done. So that's brilliant, that's it, we've covered race. I've got no interest in law and order whatsoever, it's not part of my life. <laughs> that's the problem, you keep picking topics that don't buzz me. <laughs> of course they do. They don't. Well, not let's not talk interested. about this, let's talk about this. You're, you're a man quite obsessed with law and order. Based on what? Well, law and order is basically to protect the innocent, isn't it? I mean, when we think of law and order, we usually think of crime and punishment, but it's all about protect our person. We have the right to walk the streets without getting mugged. When someone wrongs us, we want justice. It's fundamental. And you do. You were sitting in your old flat in London, phoning me every day that you wanted to go downstairs and smack their heads in for being late and shouting around and being drunk, and you could hear it. You wanted some justice. Yeah, but nothing would have happened if I called someone up and said there's people doing noise pollution. Even though there's a there's a law for noise pollution now, it's not really taken seriously, is it? Well, see, you are, see, but you are, you are concerned with law and order. No, you but wanted no your point. rights, and quite you ended quiet. up moving. You've, he's moved in now. He's moved to lovely sunny Hampstead, just down the road from us. So you're having a better life. Yeah, so but I shouldn't have to move because of some noisy people. No, you shouldn't. But I'm saying you were stressed. No one cares though. And you wanted justice, but you could, you thought you couldn't get justice, so you moved away. Yeah, which so is... I dealt with it in my way. Yeah, I right. hated them. Right. Because they didn't care about anyone else. Exactly. But the police wouldn't get involved. There's other people who live around there 
who had to put up with it. No one cared. So what did it feel like every night when you were trying to watch telly and it's hot and you've got the window open or? No, yeah, you could just hear stuff and other, you know, it's, it's that thing of, you get a lot of tourists in London, so they're talking, it's not even as if you can listen in to what they're saying and have a, have a view on their opinion because they're foreign. <laughs> that, would so that you be entertaining for you? Well, yeah, because if you can hear what people are saying, you go, oh, yeah, that's a Switch good point. Switch the telly off. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a good know, point. There's, there's I don't want to hear anyone talking. I'll tell you what, I feel, really feel sorry for people with, like, neighbours from hell. Because it's, I, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's justified, but I can see why people go mental with someone when they're bullied or, you know, constantly harassed and no one cares. And when you can't go to the police, you can't go to the police and go, there's a broken door, he's got his telly on his he's always pissed, he's shouting about, if you don't do something, I'm going to go around there um, and crack his head in. You, you're the, be the one that... But isn't it your own fault for living in central London? Well, not really, because it wasn't always like that. I'd been there years, and then all of a sudden, you know, good fellas turn up. <laughs> <laughs> sat down there making a racket. What can you say to him? <laughs> you call down. They can't hear the phone ringing. Could I just say that Goodfellas wasn't a pizza joint? He no. called the loud people that because he thought they were gangsters. Right, they sure. did what they wanted and yeah. sat outside and yeah. So, uh, but it's louder. I think it is louder abroad than it is here. Whenever I go away on holiday, I always notice that it's always a couple of decibels higher. Really? Always. Like the sound of bird noises and that are louder abroad. <laughs> Because they're trying to get a nut above the noise of the noisy people. No, that's not true. Yeah, when I was in, where was I? Menorca or something. It was like lying there. If it wasn't a noisy local, it was the people in the villa next door. If it's not them, they suddenly collected the bottles from the bottle bank. That's a nice noise when you when you're just relaxing. The bottle bank. Just pop that there where the villa is. So that was a racket. There was always some. There was just <sighs> so much noise. Animals, oh, creatures. You can't. Noise. You can't escape. It's the one thing you can't escape. Noise. Your ears never turn off. No, they're always there. But I've told you before. Wear earplugs if you have to. I don't like it. But he doesn't like. He, can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. <laughs> well, there's always a sound. Like your eyes, you can close them. My eyes close all the time, and if, if, if I don't like the look of something, yeah. no, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something, they they close before even I've thought about if I want to see it or not. <laughs> what, do you think? what do you think exactly? I just mean if if I see something on the telly or like one of those casualty programs or something. Yeah. It's like my eyes know that I'm not going to like the look of it. But no, 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 no. So they you, close no, no, quicker. No, 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 no. My ears, they oh. they seem to be interested in everything, <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what I mean is, you can't close your ears. Yeah, you that's can't, what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you can never... So that's no, why I, I love the idea that your eyes are closing when you were... Oh, I was watching that. Yeah, what are you doing, eyes? Have your eyes, have your no, eyes I mean, ever closed something that you're going... No, they you normally get it right. Your eyes aren't <laughs> making any decisions. Right. You're making decisions. You turn away because you don't like seeing something. You don't turn away and then you're going, what was that? And your eyes going, you don't want to know. <laughs> you do not know. Wanna, you don't know well, I'm just car. saying anyway. Mm, lovely pair of tits here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just mean oh. noise pollution. It's the it's the one thing you can't escape. It seems to me, from what you've said so far, is that these things happen to you, and you feel wronged, but you either want to close your eyes and ears so you can't tell it's happening, but it's carrying on, or move away from it so you're not a victim anymore, but it's carrying on. But the thing about law and order is. Um, you don't have to take it. You don't have to walk away. You can do something about it. You can combat being wronged. And I suppose we associate that with justice. It's not just punishment or retribution. It's justice. You want to know that you're valued. Uh, you know, is well, this is a big issue, isn't it, Rick? Is you know, is one life more important than another? Um, if you've transgressed in a terrible way. Um, you've murdered, or raped, whatever, and I say I'm going to put you to death because you are, you you do not belong in this society. You you are, are too transgressive. What what's to stop me? What, why well, why is that is wrong? Why is that a morally wrong thing to do? Well, Carl? this is an interesting argument, isn't it? Whether capital punishment. Now, I I don't agree with execution, state execution, of someone, whatever they've done, for many reasons. But the main one is, I don't think you can have a state that shows that sort of violence against an individual, whatever they've done, and expect people to accept the very code and morality of treating people equally and not showing violence towards them. Carl, where do you stand on the tricky issue of capital punishment? You've given it some serious thought, I imagine. 
Um, so what you're asking me, like, should he be, should he, should he be on death row? Well, should, should someone flip the switch, send him to his death in the electric chair? Um, yeah. That was the, that was the that. least considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I saw a little bit of flicker behind the eyes. I don't know what. Well, just take us through the mental process that you that you arrived at the yes with there. So you you, you know I remember because there was a, quite a brief gap there. I just was thinking, it's not a nice job if you work in there and you've got to flick the switch. Right. But I was wondering if if it's possible to just do it so it's linked up to someone's switch. <laughs> What do you mean? When they put the lights on or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sometime tonight when the sun goes down and people start putting the lights on in their house, it could happen. But we don't know what household, they might be away on holiday. So you might get an extra two weeks. <laughs> but at least that way. Because for me, well, the worst, well, the worst. You say that. This is not, the question I asked was whether, we were talking about the morality of whether you put someone to death. But he was thinking about He was the, thinking the, about literally the practicality of flipping the switch. Well, no, I think that you're, aren't you talking about the integrity of the person who n knows or knows not that they've put someone to death? Like a firing squad. Like yeah. the, what they used to do sometimes yeah. in the First World War when some, they had, they had six riflemen, but Only five one were bullet. blanks and one right. had a, and no one knew if they were the person that killed them. Yeah. So, but what my point is, you do agree that someone should be put to death for a terrible crime, do you? You've got to have something there to stop them people who, who don't care, haven't you? Nature's done it in a way, with bees. They've gone, we've given you a weapon, but if you use it, you die. And that's like the bee. Well, so yeah. they're worried they're gonna go, oh, I'm that's not gonna what we, do we it. do, won't we? We have, we have people saying, one, you can't do that. That's, that's step one. Here's the law. Don't yeah, do it. Yeah, but there's a lot of people Two. who go, I'm not bothered about the law. I'm not bothered about annoying people. Yeah, that's so true. So for them, at the end of the scale, you've got the chair, and you stick the wires on their head, and we'll fry your head. <laughs> and they go, oh god, I don't want that. That, 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 that doesn't always work, does it, with, with being put to death? Because as a deterrent, uh, most of the crimes aren't just crimes of gain with that. Some of them are crimes of passion, with, where a deterrent doesn't count, because you see red, and you, you go crazy, and you're angry, and you kill someone. Uh, I, I think a lot of those crimes the deterrent isn't relevant, you know, things like armed robbery maybe, where it's a risk, what can I get versus what my crime, maybe, maybe then it might be a deterrent, but then of course, if you start to get a capital punishment for crimes that aren't murdering someone, then th that thing brings in, you might as well murder them, but because then you've got more chance of getting away with it, so it's very delicate what you make people be killed for. Um, you've made a, a, an interesting and reasoned argument there, Rick, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the repost. Right. When I was younger, I used to nick Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Now, I did that then, and I, and I knew that even if I get caught, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. It's not going to. I'm not going to go to prison over that. But it was worth nicking because the Mars bar they were like forty five pence. Sure. When you're a kid, you can get a lot of chewing nuts for that. Chewing nuts. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they like caramel covered in chocolate. Last ages. Quite hard. Oh, I know. Yeah, you suck the chocolate off and then you got to chew Horrible. them until they're, yeah, I know, yeah. Now, I could afford them at ten pence a bag there. They'd last me sort of a morning. Um, a Mars bar was a proper treat. Mm. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of yeah. chocolate, a lot of caramel. Yeah. Like, like saying 45 pence. Yeah. So, to so me- that was, that was like an advert that went wrong just to the end. <laughs> they started off good, they go, this fly's good, so you go there, Mars bars, a lot in it, it's like, oh good, keep going, yeah, it's got, it's got caramel, it's like, yeah, 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 but it's 45 pence, which is too fucking much, so fucking nick it, you're gone. But, when I was younger, that was worth a risk, because I knew that I'd be getting something worth 45 pence, yeah, for free. You weren't gonna get the electric And check. I wasn't gonna get done. Mm. So, the stakes were high, the risk were low. No, wait, 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 wait. You mean the stakes were high, the risk were low? <laughs> I think he's just trying to sound cool. The stakes weren't high. The stakes are what can happen to you and the risk. The stakes and the risk are the same. The risk is the stake, okay? Yeah, unless you're nicking meat from a butcher's, then the, the stakes are high and the risk is low. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but what you meant was, it the, was, game was the game was high. The game was high. Yeah. The game was high. Yeah, the risk was low. Yeah. But it's not, wasn't, it wasn't, was it? Because 45p isn't a lot unless you're it a kid. It is when you're a kid. It is when you're a kid. Because I was getting 50 pence. But they're surely getting caught for nicking a Mars bar's higher when you're a kid. No, it's not, look. 
You see, most of the time, I didn't want to say which shop it was that I nicked it from, but it's where I did my paper round. Now the thing <sighs> is- So you're nicking from your own boss? Nah, but listen, I used to oh, wake him up. that I is him terrible. Run. No, cause I- That is terrible. This is awful. That Go is, on, hang on, I that wanna is hear really him. Really I wanna bad. hear him rationalise his, his that terrible sweet crime. old man used to give- It's not an old man, I used to go around and wake him up, man. right? He yeah. hated running that place. Right. Uh, if anything, I'd say I was his best asset. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I know was what, nicking from him. He was yeah, nicking from him. I don't know how business. much he made on papers, but he'd probably go forty-five free profit. Hold on, I they got their papers really early because I I got up early. Yeah. I used to go round to the well, shop. Well, no, Mars Day up. helps you work, rest, and steal. So <laughs> so I used to go round there, wake him up. He'd be like, "What are you doing round here so early?" <laughs> Ah, don't know, I'm just angry. What? I'm just, I'm just hungry for work. No. Oh, well, good, well, good boy. I'm just going to turn away a minute, yeah, um, yeah. while you stand there in front of the confectionery. Um, mm. I'll turn away now, and I'll look back now, and here's the papers. And yeah. thanks so much, Carl, because you, you're a lovely He's like kid. an honourable and trustworthy guy. Yeah, I can't guy. really afford to- I've uh, been betrayed so many times, that's why yeah. my lovely wife's no longer with me, you know, she ran off with Ken. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, at least I've got a friend. At least I've got you, one young friend. You turn friend. up early, you're- oh, God, it, it's brilliant. Oh, and Carl, keep a lookout, because- um, Someone's been nicking Mars bars. Yeah, I know, I know it's, I know it's not you, because I trust you implicitly in and, and, and by the way, Carl, why don't you take a Mars bar for free? Oh, thanks. Well, that never happened. Alright. <laughs> so, come. I'm getting 50 pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. Right. Now, if I, if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar, Yeah. 5p profit a day is not worth it. No. So, help yourself. I knew I was doing a no, good no, job no, for you. No, 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 I do. It's a, a strange analogy, Rick. It's <laughs> 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 left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. So he works in a power plant, he's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing with the uranium? Well, you know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so's uranium. <laughs> but more energy than a Mars bar. Yeah. I never nicked. I never nicked because I couldn't bear the shame. Even as a kid, I knew that was shameful. I want a clear conscience. I want to go to bed and and sleep at night. And I do, Carl. I haven't got restless leg syndrome. More people shouting out my window, so I sleep at night because I've got a clear conscience. And that, to me, is what guides me. Well, it's like when I first moved to London and I was travelling. When I was living in Oval, I was travelling across London all the way to Shepherd's Bush every day. That's a big, long, forty-five minute, hour-long journey. And uh, there was there were not barriers at either end in those days, so I could get on the tube at one end and get off the other end, and no one ever checked my ticket. And I was buying tickets every day for months and months and months, and it was starting to seem to me weird. It's like, well, no one's ever checking this. So, of course, you know, got a little bit lazy. Maybe I stopped buying tickets occasionally, taking the trip back and forth, boom, 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 boom. And then for maybe a month, travelled without a ticket. And then I was coming up, kind of got a bit blase, obviously, coming up in Oval Station. Someone steps up and says, excuse me, can I see your ticket? Uh, and that's terrible because oh. when you're in when you're in your mid twenties, it's not like a kid anymore. Oh, no. I mean, you are an adult. You've made a reasoned decision there. You can't plead ignorance. So, um. So I said, <coughs> I'm sorry, yeah, do you, let me see your ticket, please? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was looking through, because I had, for some reason I used to keep a lot of old tickets, and I was looking through, pretending to look for my ticket. I went, oh, I don't know what's happened to it, but I did, I did actually, I bought one at Shepherd's Bush. Um, and they went, okay, if we phone up Shepherd's Bush, and there's no evidence of you buying a ticket, you can go to prison. I'm going to ask you again, have you got a ticket? No. Oh no, no. I'm embarrassed. It was unbelievable. Being told off is worse. It's worse, isn't it? Well, it's because there's people walking by and I'm being told off by a woman who is at least a foot and a half shorter than me, wearing a uniform. And it was so embarrassing. It was so cripplingly embarrassing. Yeah. Can I ask you again, have you got a ticket? No, I haven't. No. So you lied? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to take your details. But honestly, being told- and that's it, there's the shame. Maybe it's a, a good bit of upbringing, unlike Carl, obviously, who's, you know, who's a man who's got no guilty conscience at all about the whole Mars bar incident, but whereas yeah. you and I, Rick, have raised, obviously, by better parents, yeah. and we, uh, we are- it's been drummed into us, you know. How much was that train journey? <laughs> I think you'll be enjoyed with this. This is something that's got sent through to us. Uh, I'm not quite sure who by, but thanks right. very much for it. It's a story that was in the, uh, the press recently. I'm not going to give you the headline. I think it gives away too much. I think, Carl, you'll be particularly interested in it. A farmer in eastern China 
Yeah, uh, there we go. Basically, he paid £1,300, um, or the Chinese equivalent, to marry the, a woman, and, uh, basically she refused to sleep with him after the wedding, wedding complaining that she felt unwell. Um, six days after the ceremony, she tried to run away, but the farmer followed her. They f he found her in some neighbouring town. They grappled together. The bogus bride's false breasts fell off. And his art. <laughs> it wasn't his art of his old tricks. It, it wasn't his art. Trying to do another uh, show in Chinese this time. But it was. It was a man. Oh and, no. Um, uh, apparently, uh, yeah, it was an arranged marriage. I don't know who sorted that out. Did he get his money back? <laughs> I think. Because yeah. I think men are cheaper than women uh, to marry in China. I think. I think so. But um, I mean, you've got to be. It's got to be pretty simple not to realise that the person you're marrying's a, a bloke, surely. Well, no, if he didn't, if he didn't have a little look, what, what, what was, uh, you know, in the back of the store, he just saw the shop window, saw a lovely, lovely little Chinese lady there. Yeah. Right? You know. The, the lovely hair, real breasts. The, well, I'm, I'm, there's, there's lumps where the breasts should be. Yeah. I can only assume they are breasts. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm not, you know, you know, you, you see women walking around going, what, are they breasts or are they, you know, stealing? Sort of grapefruits, no, <laughs> but, but wouldn't it, it, there have been a lot? I mean, wouldn't there be a quite a sort of long in initiation period when they not if it was uh, introduced and so on? Not if you put his money down. You came and they said, "Well, I want a bird quickly. Here's a, here's a grand. Sure, get me one." They, they're not going to say, uh, "Do you want real breasts?" Or <laughs> they're just going to assume, <laughs> "Sure, yeah, here's one." Yeah, 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 yeah. Chinese. But who is lady. he paying? Where is he buying this woman from? From the Chinese lady shop. <laughs> from the Chinese lady shop. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's one in China now, I think. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Not really a town. Not exactly a town, more a novelty street. And the roads are very slippery. Very sticky. I tell you what though. What? I was looking at their menus when I was walking home. They don't waste anything, do they? Why? Duck's tongue on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's better when you say it. Alright, duck's tongue. A duck's tongue, really? You sure yeah. that wasn't the proprietor? <laughs> Sexuality. What do you think of, uh, gay and lesbian issues? Each to their own. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I had one working for me. Right. One. Okay. You had one, yeah. Good. Gay fella. Yeah. Do you have a name or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's like our doctor said, elephant man's in. Yeah. I'd sort of say, it's gay fella in. They go, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just quicker. Problem with him was, right? It's, it's gay stuff that he got to, whatever you know. Each to their own and that. Like what? What sort of gay stuff uh, did he get to? What they do. They do stuff, don't they? But, but this, this lad, he used to always come in late, because he'd stay out late. And that's what they all do. They're always tired. That's what they do. So... Okay. Gays, you know, the, the gays are alright. Gays are alright, are they? Good. I've never bought a suit since I was like 11, right? <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went to my brother's wedding. That's the last time I wore a suit. Right. Really? Um, and you, won't, you can't get anywhere near it now, can you? Get, can't get into that. No. Anymore. No. Um, that was a good day. What was it? What sort of suit was it? It was, uh, like a, a, a sort of a grey silver one. Excellent. Okay. Quite flary. Nice. Um, well try and go for something grey silver one. I just think that with your little round head, what did you, what did that look like? I looked alright. <laughs> like he'd landed from the... <laughs> yeah, he just landed just, on just like, who's yeah. the most... <laughs> they the walk among us. I didn't, I didn't really need to wear a suit either, because I didn't... I hardly went into the church, it was in the car park, right? And it's when my brother was in the army, mm -hmm. and he had a Ford Capri with one of them horns that goes... Do -do 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 and you just sat there... Why didn't, why didn't he come in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> I just I just sat in that doing that all day, and the vicar was getting well annoyed with me. What when the service was on? Yeah, it was Brilliant. driving everyone. Well, up the do wall. you were you just allowed to do what you wanted when you were growing up? Like Nelson Munts from The Simpsons, you, you just were you just allowed? D didn't matter. There, was there any discipline? You didn't have teachers. You didn't. Did, did no one just? Uh, why yeah, didn't I, someone I, come I, out and? I, did, I got a couple of good idings off my dad a couple of times. What for? Just being mopey most of the time. If if I had a strop on, he'd ate that. He'd go, go out and burn something down or nick something, but don't mm. wander around with your head no, down. Well. Didn't he smack you for not liking a castle once? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's that? What's that? <laughs> Went to, uh, Carnarvon the yeah. other day, and I was bored. I was at that age when I just wanted to go in an arcade, and my dad was saying, come and see the castle, you know, there's history here, and I still don't like castles. It's one of them things that, again, just too far back to sort of even think about people living in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, look, it's a wreck, you know, knock it down, flatten the thing. Sure. <laughs> and I was being really mopey. Isn't that great? And it's weird, because <laughs> now, 
like, my mum and dad have retired and gone to Wales. Yeah. And now and again he texts me there and every time we get to the point where he gave me a clout he goes, you're getting flashbacks, son. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a sobering lesson for you. Yeah. You're not on the British Heritage Committee anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the National Trust land tarmac it. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> car park in Britain, for Christ's sake. How important do you think education is? I haven't got that much. Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, any form of education. I don't just mean that you can learn things. I you mean, can you know can be... too much, though, can't you? And then you worry about stuff. What sort of thing? What do you mean? Just stuff, like, if you watch the news, you start going, oh... It's a war on and that. Don't watch it. It's like, no worries, do you know what I mean? You got Einstein. Yeah. He knew loads. Look at the state of him. <laughs> what do you mean, look at the state well, of him? He, 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 he looks a bit of a mess, doesn't he? Right. Whereas, I don't know, look at a caveman or whatever, with no worries. Fairly healthy looking, good hair. You know what I mean? They're not bald, they're not stressed out. Because you've lost a lot of hair, do you think that's from all this knowledge that's shooting around in your head? Yeah, probably, I do, yeah, probably. I could do without, you know, some of the knowledge I've got on that. I think we need some evidence, though. I think we want to know some of the knowledge you've got. Like what? What do you want to know? But I, I remember talking to you about the nature of infinity once, and uh, there's a lovely model that shows the nature of infinity, where they say um, an infinite amount of chimps, an infinite amount of typewriters will... Um, type the complete works of Shakespeare. And you couldn't grasp that, you couldn't wouldn't grasp happen. It wouldn't happen. I think you know it wouldn't happen, but you say it would to annoy me. No, because it works by definition, because it's the nature of infinity. It doesn't matter. If the, it, infinite means if they did everything at random, it's just random, 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 forever, forever and ever and ever, eventually they type everything. They, it, 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 it wouldn't, it wouldn't. They'd check, what do you mean it wouldn't? It wouldn't, there'd always be mistakes. There will be mistakes. They'd do the complete works of Shakespeare an infinite amount of times. Yeah, but do you mean they'd actually do it from start to finish? Yeah. Or a chapter? They might get a chapter done and you go, right, well done. It's but not about... No, no. That. no! There's no, there's no feedback to it. It's just that everything being done, they will eventually do everything every time. They'll, they'll, they'll get it wrong an infinite amount of times. They'll get every letter wrong an infinite amount of times. The same monkey. It doesn't matter whether it's an infinite amount of monkeys. Well, how does the other one know what the first one did? It d doesn't matter. They've chosen monkeys, not because they're thinking about it, to take thought out of it. They want it to be random. Yeah, but when they hand over... When Who they hands over? over what monkey, do you mean they shift? The monkey. The monkey's done, done I, whatever shift pattern they're on. <laughs> they're not on a shift pattern. Inf infinity. You work from now, forever. That's one not... monkey. What difference does it make if it's one monkey for an infinite amount of time, or an infinite amount of monkeys. Because you can believe it if it was, if it was one monkey doing it. Because he's going to get better, isn't he, as time goes on. It's nothing to do with their consciousness. It's nothing to do with them thinking about it. What do you mean he'd get better? He'd get better if he's doing it on his own. If it's just the one monkey, he knows what he's done. It's nothing to do with knowing what you've done. It's just a random process to show the nature of infinity. With no errors. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. Seriously, people, I think you're winding me up on that one. It wouldn't happen. And it hasn't happened. Because we haven't had an infinite amount of monkeys. We've ever had won. years, though, haven't we? There hasn't been one publication for monkey. <laughs> they've, been around, they've been around longer than us. That's what I'm saying. They've been around longer than us. <laughs> you're laughing, but I think you know. I think you know it doesn't happen. Do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know, I wasn't around. So but you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days? I don't know, people always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it was a better life in the 50s. And it's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest in about 1984. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a specific year. Why? Why was, just, was that? It's just I was free and happy. You know how, old, I mean? how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I don't need to... He's just counting on his fingers now. Twelve. Right, okay. And it was just good. So right. the happiest days of your life were between the age of twelve and thirteen? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I liked messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know... Just potted about. 
I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or just riding in a circle endlessly through Tell you. blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in. I was always when when everyone always goes, "Where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening?" I was always out on my bike, and everything was like, like you and McGregor. A, a memory is always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in my house- <laughs> I love it. This is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But That's what I mean, being you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you heard. Your hair, it your is. hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk stupid, ma'am. So yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see- And it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. He's your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> on his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, it was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worried look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> my eyes moved about more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, I couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm, oh, it's a workout, yeah. a baby workout. Oh, hey, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. Yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to um, like a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said three, when, I'm when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, alright. <laughs> I love the fact that he could reason with her. I love if he's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know, she goes, I, I think not, mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now. Because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just <laughs> loads of people just walking around. There was never any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I thought, what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony. Yeah. He did tiling with him. He <laughs> drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going. Oh God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just. How old were you? He's down the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, out. Four, he's four years old. Yeah, <laughs> but he's only having a. He's down the pub with Tony, probably playing darts. <laughs> Yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? <laughs> uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we're all bringing ours. <laughs> Alright, see you later, mate. But that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out of <laughs> the back car and you were gone. <laughs> some bloke's driving off in a van, <laughs> they're just going, oh, well, oh, yeah, uh, doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit and then uh, the For every bit, just had a game of pool. Then my dad came in. It was like, oh there you are. Mm. Oh there you are! I love that! Oh, where's my baby? Going to drive, just gonna have a quick pint. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Alright mate. So uh yeah, I think things were better but I may maybe uh, uh maybe it's that thing that I don't appreciate what I've got. But to me, being English isn't anything that great. Really? Why not? Because, uh, it's just what I've been dealt with. But what would you, uh, having, I mean, I know you know nothing about the world, um... You've travelled nowhere, you've no, seen no. nothing. Yeah, um, but if you could be any nationality, what would you be and why? Um, probably be Italian. Okay, why? Well, just, uh, 
Yeah, I like the idea of it. I like it. Italians are all right. Aren't Where would you live? Rome. Probably, I probably wouldn't want to be in in the middle of Rome. It's too much hassle. Have you been to Rome? Yeah, it's nice to visit and stuff, but it's just I wouldn't want to live there. It's, you've got to get paperwork done and that. If you just want to put a picture up because everything's old, everything's listed. It's, it's it's, hassle. He's only been Italian about three minutes and he's already slacking <laughs> he's off. He's already no, no, But I like I, I like I like there. Rome. Yeah. It's good. A lot of old stuff. Why yeah. have you chosen Italy? I'm interested to know why of all the countries you've chosen Italy. I was a late comer to pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one year round. I like it now. It's like one of my favourite things I have. Um, which there isn't really anything like that in England. That even though well, it's- Well, well except pasta. Pasta's no, almost exactly not, like it. Yeah, no, we've, it's got, not, we've got pasta, It's we? not ours though, is it? And we no, don't know how to eat it. What do you mean we don't know how to eat we, it? We do it all wrong. You stick, <laughs> you stick it up your arse again. Look at me, I know how to fucking eat it. No, but what I mean is, if, if you saw a proper Italian and they saw what we did to pasta, they would not be happy. What are we doing wrong? Tell me what we're doing wrong Well, I don't pasta. know that, otherwise we wouldn't be doing well, it wrong. Well, how do you know, know they, we're doing it wrong? You know I've just heard we do it wrong. It's like how we we have the coffee at all the wrong times. I ordered a cappuccino somewhere and the Italian fella said, you shouldn't be having that now, it's a breakfast coffee. Yeah, it is, yeah. Before 12 o'clock, yeah. yeah. but I was having it at like quarter to 11 at night. Oh, wow. Like well, that's mental. absurd. How you get to sleep with a lovely cup of coffee? Yeah, that's, that's Well, a I don't point. sleep anyway, You do shouldn't it. drink coffee anyway at night. There was cappuccino or frappuccino or mocha. Doesn't matter. Don't drink coffee after about four in the afternoon anyway, full stop. So hang on, so you love pasta, but you're not eating it right, so you'd like to be Italian in order to be able to eat pasta correctly, even though you enjoy the pasta you what eat. What do you feel being Italian uh, is, and what, what's it's attracted just, it's to being- It's just very sort of, um, it's a relaxed lifestyle. Whenever you go to Italy, everyone's outside a cafe. It doesn't matter what sort of- Carl, you are. that's all you do now with your spare time is yes, outside a cafe. they get more respect over there for- Why? It. It's, it's like, it's okay to do that. There's older people sat outside cafes who do nothing. I and love it's just the fact that he wants to be retired. Italian so he can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than he does now sitting si outside a cafe. No, but everyone's rushing about here. People have like colder coffee, they have frappuccinos here because they haven't got time to have a hot coffee. It's like they've got a coffee with icing so I can neck it. Get it down <laughs> my neck and get on with my day. Relax, enjoy your coffee. I don't understand the rush. <laughs> you but, never but, enjoy anything. You say that you don't enjoy anything. You don't enjoy a coffee. When you're having a coffee, you're probably going, oh, I, can't, I don't know if I can enjoy it yet, in retrospect. And tomorrow, I'll go, oh, I like that coffee yesterday. But the reason you enjoy Italy is because when you were there, you're on holiday. That's why you're able to chill out and no, relax. No. When you say that it's old people, old people sat in some little Sicilian village. Of course, they, they got no money. <laughs> Here, I went to the Salvation Army. Right. Why? Because it's nice. What do you mean? You get, you get, you can get toast and a cup of tea for a pound. <laughs> oh, you little skinflint. Right. You little roundy heavy There's nothing Scrooged. skinflinty about that. That's just, that, that should be the going rate, Steve. I'm surprised I haven't seen you in there, to be honest. <laughs> but the thing is- Where is now, it? Now, <laughs> just near Camden. What is it? Is it like uh, old people? A lot of old people, mainly old people. Um, and this is what I'm saying. These are people who are old and they sat in a cafe, but they don't get any respect. People are walking past and they don't want to go in the way you reacted when I said I was in the Salvation Army. That's the reaction they get. Yet an old Italian person, they looked after better. Well, it's certainly true they look after their older families, don't right. they? they do and that's all I'm saying, whereas, I mean, it's a lovely place, Salvation Army. Every old fella in there has got a tie on. Yeah. They make an effort. And that, that, that chokes me when I see an old boy still put a shirt and tie on. He he's, he's, he's 90, he's like been through the hardship and yet on a Sunday, they still shine their shoes and, you know what I mean? I mean, you sometimes can't even bother to put your trousers on. I know, I know. Well, I've got an elasticated waistband yeah. and they're, they're still fiddling with braces and buttons. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what I like about Italians and that. There's a, there's a lot of So you respect. want to be Italian because when you're old, you can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than you do here. Yeah. Look at the old people in this country. They never look happy, do they, really? Most of the time, when you see them walking around, they, they go to pot. No one's keeping an eye on them. Well, it's a, an important thing, isn't it? That, that um, my uh, my mum. This is when she was about sixty, sixty-five. Uh, there was a, a neighbour who was uh, uh, like, you know, eighty-five, ninety, and um, again, completely alone. And my mum used to go on there every day. Do you want any shopping? Do it right. She, she was she was she was good for her. She was like her witness in the world, you know, to her existence. But I remember calling her once and. Uh, She'd come back, I said, what have you been doing? She went, oh, I've been around so-and-so. So I went, all right. She went, oh, 
she won't die, Rick. <laughs> like, she's helping yeah, her, but she's yeah, thinking, yeah, this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago here. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 well, that's <laughs> the problem, you know, if you, if you get pally with an old person, yeah. then you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is that you, you, you meet an old, you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start, um, popping in his sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do? If you're- It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop, as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on- on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs. Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> how can you- You could just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you've brought up weird people. There Go was on. a fella called Shorts Man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so pedestrian! <laughs> oh, I love the Shorts Man wore some shorts. Now, now, what I like, yeah, he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know, like shorts now for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's yeah. no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's Go nothing on. gonna pop out. Yeah. No. But Shorts Man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. <laughs> so that he what? knew, with the big strides and the short shorts, yeah. they were gonna pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why were you looking at the shorts? Just because it was, it was like, it was what like, was it? it was like playing Buckaroo. <laughs> it was like, when are they gonna pop out? But what? <laughs> <laughs> It's just what happened. So, wh right, but so, so, Shorts Man, <laughs> so he was an exhibitionist, he liked, he basically wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah, <laughs> And they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan, right? <laughs> now the thing is, what, what we like in England, I think we like that. We like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah, yeah. eccentric's very, that's very British, eccentric, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I'm glad I grew up round there with all them people. So am I. It's news now, isn't it? Sometimes I think, don't tell me, don't want to know. Just get on with it. Whoever's job that is, get on with it. Yeah. Why am I being told about it? When I've got a problem in my job, no one else knows. No, no. one helps me out and goes, well, I've got an opinion for him. No. This might help him. No one helps me. But I'm being bombarded by everyone else's asshole. They love talking, actually. That's what the English do. Talking, but they never finalise it. They love just being in the meeting room, talking, saying, yeah, we could do this, we could do that. I'm the only one in that room not getting paid. Everyone else is on a wage. <laughs> I'm there looking at me watch thinking, right, I've been here for an hour and nothing's been sorted. <laughs> They're looking, thinking we can drag this out for another half hour, get us to lunch. That's what annoys me. They're all sat there just pushing bullshit around the room like dung beetles. <laughs> I'm sick of it. And that's what the English do. <laughs> and it's a shame because I don't think they used to be like that. I wish everybody just sort of kept to themselves more. Like, you know, certain animals do, you just get on with it. It's like, like an old-fashioned way. What animals keep well, any, themselves? Well, any animals keep themselves themselves. Like what? Said, uh, loads of things. What, what, keeps, what animals keep themselves? Badges. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd they keep themselves? Just, no, they just, uh, when, whenever you've seen them and you're sort of wandering about a roadside, they're on their own. Right. They're not, they're not sort of- What are they doing? In pairs. I don't know. Most of the time they're dead. <laughs> I've seen more dead badgers than alive ones. I've never seen a live badger. <laughs> I don't it's know what his point is. So that's is. why they're one alone and two getting on with it. I love it. Most I of love the time. It's starting <laughs> off with some kind of poetic analogy. I don't know what that was. We talk about disability in the show. What are your views on the disabled? What, dis what sort of disabilities? Well, what sort are they? Well, I, as soon as you mention disabilities, I'm thinking elephant man rather than just in a wheelchair. Okay. Because they get looked after, they get ramps and that, don't they? They're all right. But they're loving it. They love, they love those ramps, don't they? No, but they they're can't get enough of those ramps. In and out of libraries like nobody's business. There's, there's different, I mean, you know that I'm into freaks and that. No, again, I'm not, you know, it seems like I'm just, just having a go all the time. No, but not. they fascinate me. Like, what do you mean? What is a freak to you, then? Something that you look at and you go, you know, you do a double take. <laughs> Steve Merchant. <laughs> uh, just, just, just odd stuff. <laughs> right, okay. Like what though? When was it when they used to have sideshows and that and they'd, and they'd take them out, like the pinheads and all that? <laughs> Nothing's changed, has it? You know what I mean? People still like to see a two-headed kid or whatever. <laughs> Who likes to see a two-headed... <laughs> That's what you mean, isn't it? You like to see a two-headed kid? 
There's no such thing. You're having a laugh. <laughs> no, there, there's not a two-headed kid. <laughs> He's got that book. Is it true you carry this book round with you? This is a book, right, of the 50 sort of weirdest things in the world. <laughs> It's a rundown, right? It's a rundown, it's a little chart. Yeah. Right? At number 50, don't know if you can get this, two headed fella. That's at number 50. So what's at number one? It's not two heads. Of course though, it's it? two heads. It's not two heads. Can they see that or what? Yeah. What do you mean it's not two heads? Well, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's, it's weird. I'll give you, it's, I mean, that's not a, that's not a normal look. I will give you that. I mean, I don't think he could be sorted out with the salon, but it's not strictly two heads, is it? But I don't know if you like it, that's good then. So that, right. Well, that's at, that's at like number 50 and that. There's loads of, loads of stuff in there. Just, do you want to run through some of your favorite freaks with me? Yeah, uh, just gotta watch it, it's getting a bit worn out. Some of my favorites, yeah? Just normal, normal lad, yeah? He yeah. looks normal there, just a nice little head. Nice little air cut on that, nice top, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Three legs. Three-legged fella. And he's quite happy with it. The annoying thing is, right? Yeah. Three legs. Yeah. You know what his job was? Yeah. Three-legged juggler. <laughs> What's the point of that? What do you mean the point of it? Well, he was his career's advisor there. <laughs> what should he have done? Well, he's got three legs, isn't it? So, any a footballer, whatever, <laughs> jogger. <laughs> a, a, a jogger. You know what I mean? Oh God! So you got that in there. He's at number twenty-three. Oh God! There's loads of odd diseases. I mean, you were talking about like disabilities and that. Sometimes it's not a disability. Sometimes just people have got weird stuff. There's, there's one here, right? Again, just normal family, family photo going on. Yeah, everyone's. Sort of stood around, stood around the piano with the little mate <laughs> who's got that that aging disease. I mean, it's not it's not funny, is it? But look at him, sat around the piano singing "Happy Birthday" for the eighth time that day. <laughs> right? Just weird, weird stuff like that. Weird, isn't it? Oh, God. But it fascinates me. It's not having a go. It's just just odd, odd stuff. I like odd stuff. So, is that class as disabilities? Well, I'd have thought so. That's what I think of them then. I mean, what other famous sort of freaks are they? See, I don't think they even like being called freaks. I think if you're born with an extra leg and the, uh, and the midwife says, well done, Mr and Mrs Chalmers, uh, you've given birth to a nine pound freak. I think, you know what I mean? The freak isn't a term that I think they use. Well, how do they break it to them? I mean, do they do, do, do they sort of, just slip it in so they go, right, we've got one leg out, and here's the other two. <laughs> just, just slip it in that way. <laughs> how, how do they do it? Like the Elephant Man. Yeah. You know, he's, that's my favourite film, you, you know that. Why is it your favourite film, though? It's just because film. It's, it's a brilliant film. It's, it's sad. It just makes you think, oh, you know, glad I haven't got a big head. Yeah. Um, you must wake up every day and you're thankful you've got a normal shaped head. Do you say that, but it's round? Perfectly spherical. What, what shape should heads be? Well, they're not perfectly spherical, is it? There's not, most people don't look like a tennis ball. <laughs> so, where were we? <laughs> Elephant Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's my favourite film. See, you know that wasn't his real name? You know his name was John Merrick? But the doctors did use the Elephant Man as the name, so they knew what his problem was before he turned up, otherwise you're wasting time looking at filing systems. When they say, John Merrick's coming in at three, and the doctor's like, oh, what's his problem? <laughs> wasting time, they go, elephant man's in, they go, right, get some more bums in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fact. Thomas Jefferson, you know who he is, once observed, a nation as a society forms a moral person and every member of it is personally responsible for his society. But Jefferson's fellow countryman, as you know, the American writer and intellectual Randolph Bourne, mm. noted some years later, society is one vast conspiracy for carving one into a kind of statue it likes and then placing it in the most convenient niche it has. So one saying, no, this is why we're moral people. The society is great for us. It, it turns us into responsible people, okay? And we, we should love that society and make sure 
it's perpetuated. But Born said no, no, it's just a way to mould someone into what it likes and put it into a little box so it can't hurt anyone. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's not, again, it's... <laughs> no, Which bo both, of them, both of them are right. Both of them are right, but they're contradictory. They're both opinions. Um, they're, certainly, they're certainly opinions. But you, uh, I mean, I, I don't know why I am the way I am. <laughs> it just happens, doesn't it? Uh, you know, I don't like killing a fly. No one would stop me if they did. But there's something in me that goes, don't do that. Right, so this is a very important theory, because you're basically saying... Well, you could be saying one of two things. You could be saying that goodness is innate. Not likely. No. <laughs> or he could be saying that um, there's a morality that transcends rules and society pressure. Whether or something's legal or not doesn't mean that you have to do it because it's legal. And That's it doesn't what mean I meant. You don't, yeah? yeah? Is that the one you meant? That's what I meant. Um, there was a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between... Uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> now the thing is, is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw? Are a you going to extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's see, let's see. So there's a wasp. Yeah, yeah, well, so look at the old scenario. Wasp, so old scenario. Wasp, right? wasp, as you, as you wasp, said, sorry, just clarify. As you said, it was kicking off. No, right. Okay. Old scenario. So you're looking I'm out there. your window. No, right. I'm I'm in the kitchen by right. the sink. Yeah. Uh, washing up, we've got a new sink. We've mm. got a dishwasher as well, but I said, well, I'll use the sink, we've paid for it, let's yeah. give it a go. So you're like a Luddite threatened by the technology. You're thinking your worth will be taken away, your r reason uh, in the world will be taken away by the dishwasher. So a little know, bit. No, Suzanne, we've got a dishwasher, but I am going to carry on. You're going to need me. I want to show I'm needed. I want to use it. It's like, I don't understand it if someone's got a really nice car, but they have a chauffeur. Drive it. It's yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy your car. Well, I Feel a gear car. change. Yeah, but you don't drive. No, I know. Yeah, so that's all right. But what I'm saying is, I've got a sink, I've got a dishwasher. What am I doing? If I put the dishwasher on, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit down and do nothing. Probably. Wash up then. Do something useful. I do a better job than the machine does. Well, so get rid of the machine altogether then? No, because Why? sometimes I might want to go for a walk or something. Well, why don't you go for a walk all the time? It's good for you. I'd had a walk in the morning. Anyway, so, I'm washing well, up. That was all the prelude to the wasp and the crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> it better be fucking good to top that. <laughs> His life's so complicated. For a man who does nothing at all, right, <laughs> his, wife, his life is so complicated. No, because it's the same thing. The kitchen's failing you. All so right, I, you're I washing up for okay, Christ's right, sake. You're using a new sink. The dishwasher's there. It's not doing anything. It's not even plugged in. It's pointless. Right. What's going on? I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, oh my God, look at that. What? There's a, like a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle. <laughs> never seen it before. Right. Yeah, wait, right. wait, wait, Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually <laughs> was a sporting event? Two people event. dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they're there, wrestling, and I was like, well, stop them then. So stop she... Whoa, 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 You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering <laughs> with a wasp in a cricket? Because one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> So this is much bigger metaphor than black no, and because, white. Because listen, this is more important than apartheid and segregation. <laughs> because team. I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> because I've, I've, they they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. That I, I always overdo it with a fairy liquid. Yeah, sure. So she's she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> Poor Suzanne. Now, so she uses a tea towel, flicks them. Flick, clever, right. good right. thinking. The the wasp goes its own way. The cricket sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So I'm sort of saying that is really weird because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. Okay, well that's just your theory and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back I saw one eating chicken. They shouldn't right. be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we ate wasps, we ate their stripes, we ate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, subsequent information. Oh, okay, through. sorry. Okay, so anyway... Like Columbo, it? Uh, yeah. So I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not! Definitely not! 
<laughs> it was shaking a little bit. Yeah. So I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it because it was a hot day. I'll put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated. I love I'll this. Like it's done the marathon. It's got a little, <laughs> it's got Mars on the leaf, written so, on the leaf, and now it's just walking over the little medal. So Suzanne, we, you know, we, I leave it for a bit. Yeah, what did you say? Half an hour, but about, about left it for half an hour. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? she wanted, what did she want to do? Just sort of like. Yeah, um, she just sort of said, leave it, stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned. Sure, let's right. get on with our lives, she said. Yeah. So I put the leaf on it. You're putting too much very liquid. Why don't we use a dishwasher? <laughs> we go. It's just 400 quid, you dirty bald cunt. So we go off, and half an hour later, I get back in, and I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to go and see the. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. But hold on, why do you put. put the, Dish in the dishwasher and go for a walk. I don't understand. So now you're because so, so now as a dishwasher sitting there bone idle, you're washing up when you could be walking, and then you're still. Well, it's walking. a good job I didn't go for a walk though, wasn't it? Because what? How would that have turned out? That fight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there would have just been a so anyway, on your back door. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Don't know if the wasp did that or the tea towel flick. Or it was already disabled, and that's why the wasp thought this is an easy one. What if the wasp was helping it? It wasn't, no, honestly. But what it if was, it was such a commotion? Because we, we're such friends, and humans don't understand us, and anyone interfered would definitely don't understand us, right? He's not an entomologist. Right? Well, this is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. And it's a, uh, what was it called? Brilliant. Oh, I can't remember. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot. <laughs> and it stings them in the head. Right, not this particular. There wasn't like a little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like a it's just, it's just an incident that just happens a lot between wasp, uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, mm. and what happens is it's that whole thing that we've talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head, uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like oh I can't I can't handle this. So what do you mean, moving its one leg. It was sort of just moving its one leg quite slowly, like it's just come out from one an operation. Leg, it's lost one leg, you said. Yeah, it's lost one. Yeah, it's moving five legs slowly. No, it's just it's one big one. We've got one big leg. One big leg <laughs> at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. Oh, I see. So, uh, okay. So it's now right. it's only got one. It's sort of like oh, it looks grass. Is it not a grasshopper if it's jump? Is it? Not a, what colour was it? Is it like sort of uh, beige? Oh, it's probably a cricket. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. It's important. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? You did a bit of leafleting amongst the cricket in community? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round they don't have an egg put in their There's no way it said well, that. Well, he said they normally stunned for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> Fucking ostrich egg, but it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again, mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out a wasp and leaves the carcass. Well this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. What you, you sorted it? You sorted it. What do you, you, you want to say? What do you mean? Well, I said what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, it's best that we don't tell you. Well, what sorry, so, sorry, sorry, but, uh, it, 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 She said she sorted it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it and I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point, I was painting. And she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what So what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means... Say I, it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... Uh, it's no longer in misery. So what do you mean? What? What did she do? She, she crushed its head. Because she said it was moving well, specifically about. specifically just the head? She just crushed the head? With a stone. She got a tiny head-shaped stone <laughs> and... Squashed it. Because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with his one leg and stuff. Mm. You had to kill it. I imagine, I had this vision that one day, <laughs> Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um... 
<laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. I had to put well, out of his misery. What? I just couldn't bear to see the twitching like anymore. Know, no. I know you didn't like to know, but no. I just took a rock. Yeah, and just squashed its head. What was in it? There was nothing in it. <laughs> nothing in it. It just, just caved in. Was, like. there, was there an egg in it from a No, no, no. no it, was like, it was like, you know, when you will get a, a blown egg and then you crush it and it's just, it's, it was nothing. Just, <laughs> yeah, nothing in it at all. Nothing in it but at I just all. think, he seems happier, I'm certainly happier. I, I, I was happier because, uh, I'm, I'm much happier because he's sort of, uh, he's more, more sensible without the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're still happy together, but now we use the dishwasher instead of him washing up. Yeah. When we already got one that cost more than a quid. <laughs> what, what metaphor are you taking from this? Just the way, yeah, so that's at the beginning, there was meant to, there was, there was going to be a point you were going to extrapolate for this, like a fable. So what did you learn from that? Um, <clears throat> I thought I was doing right at the time. And well, that's, that's, it, that's isn't it? important, isn't it? And is it objective or subjective? You know, one person's evil is another person's good. Some people think abortion is the worst thing you could do. Others think it's it's a it's a a woman's right and it's it's a kindness. It's some people think that you should never kill under any circumstances. Other people say that some killing is morally right. Again, should uh, an action be judged on its intent or its result? If someone said to you. Oh, I thought I was doing a good thing, but you know, they opened the windows and your cat fell out. I thought they, would, they, they didn't even know you had a cat. Did they knock it though, or did it just jump out? It just jumped out. Well, I'd say it's not my fault. Your no. cat's daft. No, it was hot in here. Right. I've opened the window. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not getting the blame for that. No, that wasn't my point, was it? That if you if you open the window, right? And they come home and you go, oh my god, the cat jumped out and killed itself. You go, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I opened the window um, because I wanted to let some air in. I was doing a good thing. So did I know it jumped out? No, no. I'd, I'd probably say, you sure they didn't do that before I got here this morning? Did you have the window open? Right. I don't think I... I, I, I looks like it's been there a while. So it's a bit hard. You instantly don't want to be culpable for your own actions. I mean, it is Hang your on fault. A it wasn't it me is, you did it. It is your fault the cat's dead. Yeah, it's, your, it's an accident, but nevertheless it's still your rock no, fault. No, if it's definitely me, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it jumped out. I opened the window because it was hot in here. The cat jumped out, dead. Let's go and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't, w wouldn't worry that much about a cat. Right, but what if it was a baby? Well, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> What do you think of the old people? What do you think of their old issues? What do you mean? What do you think about, you know, but isn't it a shame that people work with their life and then just get a little state pension that... Oh, they do all right for themselves, don't they, the old yeah. people? What do they do? Just, just potter about, don't they? they just potter. Yeah. They don't need much money. Yeah. As you get older. What do they spend it on, do they? Ornaments. <laughs> Which are fading out, aren't they? Yeah. They, won't, they won't have ornaments in a few years' time. No one buys ornaments now. It's always older people, isn't it? Yeah. Just as you get older, I mean, things are changing all the time. It's like I've said to you about old people that don't have Twixes. They don't eat Twix, but they like ornaments. So that generation, you know what I mean? Things change. What do you mean old people don't like Twix? You never see an old man having a Twix. You don't. You never see one eating one. Well, how would you know? Because you see them, don't you, sat about having Werther's or whatever. You never see them sat there tucking into a Twix. I've never thought about it. Well, that's because you haven't seen one to think about it. If you saw if you saw a fella eating one, you go, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Brilliant. Start with capital punishment. Do you believe in the death penalty? Yeah, if uh, if they know for certain that. Well, how do you know for certain? If they say I did it. Well, people have confessed before and been lying, haven't they, to get attention or something? Why would you Why would you lie? You might be protecting someone else. Uh, the love of, a, of a, a parent for their child who's committed a terrible crime might say, I did it. There's loads of reasons. How, how can you kill someone? How can you make that a definitive ending when you can never know if Because that it? person wouldn't do it again because then they'd know, wouldn't they? What? Say if I did a murder. Yeah. You said, I'll take the rap for it. Yeah. Right? You go and get hung. Yeah. I can't do a murder again because they'll go, so it wasn't him. Well, there's loads of no, there's loads of reasons people. Uh, uh, if you're mental, if you're a serial killer, you don't stop because you think you might get caught. So what are you asking me? I was asking you, do you believe in the death penalty? No. Well, what, what do you want me to say? I don't know what the right answer is. Well, it's what you think. We're having a discussion. I said, I said, if, if they've done it and that, yeah, do them in, yeah. Could you 
pull the rope? Could you release the guillotine? Why am I getting involved in it? Well, if you believe in it, sure you, surely if you believe in it, you should be able to stand by it. Well, what? which one is it? Which one have I got to do? What, what button am I pressing? Does it matter? Well, yeah, it's different, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't hang someone, but you'd... Bang. So what do you do when you hang someone? You kick the stool away? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, it probably is, I don't know, it's probably more sophisticated now. It used to be a trap door, didn't it? So you just go like that. It's an easy gig. That's a job. That's someone's job. OK, then. OK, we're not getting anywhere here. If you had to be killed, right, would you rather be hung, beheaded, burnt at the stake, or lethal injection? Probably, uh, Probably the injection. Definitely. I said, you know, you just go to sleep. What if I tell you, everything else is the same, but with a lethal injection, as he injects you, he just slips his finger up your ass for a laugh. Why would that happen? <laughs> is that in small print? Have they told me that before? <laughs> I'm just saying, would it make a difference if you're going to die anyway? So you just lay down like that, like, he just injects you, he goes, OK, just not, just but why is he doing that? What? Why is he doing that? Just for a laugh, why not? For a laugh. Well, yeah, if he's killing you, if you're worthless to society, why doesn't he have, he might as well put his finger up your ass. What's it up to you? What's to you? It doesn't make any difference to you, does it? You're going to die in a minute. And do I know he's going to do this? Yeah, it's, well, you... I'm not, I'm not happy. So what is it then? Lethal injection with the finger up the ass. Hanging. I'm not happy with the finger up the ass. <laughs> no, you're not. But you're not, surely you're not happy being put to death. I'd just say, well, well, hang on a minute, what, what's, what, why are you putting gloves on? Why are you getting that finger out to get my ass? Because maybe he doesn't put gloves on. Why does he put gloves on? Well, I'm, I'm not happy with that. But it's nothing to do with you, Carl. Well, what do you have? I'd have lethal injection without the finger on my ass. That's not your choice, though. You've done an awful crime. I'm not having finger up the ass. Hang me, then. <laughs> well, you'd rather be hung than lethal injection with just, just popping the finger up your ass. I don't want that. So. OK. Um, uh, what are my other options? Have your head cut off? You know about the... Uh, are, you, are you still alive for about 30 seconds after you've had your head cut off? Wouldn't have thought so. You see, this is, again, you know, you believe the monkeys typing away. Well, it's nerve reactions, isn't it? You're not alive as such. Well, they got them to walk um, years ago, whenever they did the last sort of head chopped off thing. Yeah. How long ago was that? I don't know. A few years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, they said to him, right, you're going to die in that. You've come yeah. to terms with it. Yeah. yeah. Have a bit of fun, right? Um, Finger up the arse? No, no, no. Going to do a white line on the pavement. Bollocks. How could they tell him that that's what they were going to do? So he was meant to what? Remember this and walk the white line without a fucking head? Well, that, this is what they did. Well, no. They painted a white line, yeah. right? Yeah. He said to him, right, I'm going to cut your head off. Yeah. There's the line. Have a look now. Right, so you know where it is. Carl, think what you're saying. How is, how is he going to remember it without a head? No, you remember, you, you remember. Where's the memory? Where's the memory? In his legs. Where do you think you store memory? In your fucking arms. Yeah, but if you do it quick enough, if it's like, go, and, and you no, he's walking there, head. and he's, he's walking, and he walked. He no, 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 it's bollocks. It's he, bollocks. Did, he did 35 steps. Bollocks. It's not because, bollocks, though. Because how can bollocks. the body remember what his head was told a few seconds ago. His head's now in a basket. Yeah. The body doesn't go, what was I meant to, meant to Sorry, what was I meant to do? I know, I was meant to walk along. Well, he they did it, it was a test. Well, no, it wouldn't happen. You're talking shit again. Okay. Believe in absolute yeah. bollocks. So it's you with the monkeys and the Shakespeare. <laughs> That's what annoys me. It's not about monkeys, is it? It's about random. Yeah. So you'd have lethal injection? Lethal injection, yeah. I think that is best. Well, thanks very much, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Carl, I'd like to ask you, if I may, stop twiddling that. Now, this is interesting, because you were fiddling with a bit of plastic there, and it was annoying me, and I know a lot of things annoy Ricky, get mm. very infuriating for him. Um, <clears throat> social etiquette. Now, that's a very... Uh, that, that's not obviously inscribed by law. These are just things which have built up in society. So, for instance, it's impolite to sneeze and then shake someone's hand. Yeah. It's... Um, or sneeze straight in their face and yeah. go, oh, sorry, I've got swine flu. Now, those things are obviously good practice in terms of avoiding the spread of disease, so that makes sense. But other things also, are... Also, it's just good to be disgusting. If, so, if someone hasn't got a disease, I don't like to see someone sneeze on the pavement or sniff or scratch their ass. So social etiquette, I mean, how do you decide... I mean, what 
what prevents you from being truthful and honest at all times? I don't know, there's something in you, and sometimes you can just pop it out, can't you? Uh, I've been in a situation when I've said stuff and I've thought, why did I say that? Go on. But it's not always... Uh, in the dentist, last time I went to the dentist, I sat in the reception bit, big fat woman comes up the stairs, massive she was, <laughs> had a right sweat on. <laughs> Uh, right. She gets there and uh um, breath. <sighs> yeah, she was <sighs> again, you know I mean she was friendly, dead friendly, but kind of like, you know, leggings on uh sort of, you know, shoes but not on properly she, she was stood on the heel. Yeah. yeah. You know, like she couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's like greasy air. Um and she went up and she's been all all happy and everything. And I think that's what annoyed me. So when she sort of said, Oh yeah, I've lost weight she was talking to the woman behind the counter and she sort of said yeah I find it really difficult especially living where I live and having to come down this high street because there's so many cake shops and everything and she sort of said you know today I've walked past normally I always have a, a coffee and a donut but today you know I didn't have a coffee and a donut and I just said why was it shut <laughs> right? no, you didn't. I did honestly <laughs> honest to god on my mum's life I said why was it shut <laughs> She said, oh, Hold well, yeah. on, why did you butt in? She wasn't even talking Honestly, to you. I know, it's really, really weird. It's Wait, really weird. Did you have weird. to shout across the dentist's waiting room? Or no, no, it was just, it was a, it's a small waiting room, so you got the stairs, you go in, you've got about four chairs, and then this old desk, and I, I get on with the woman behind the counter, and I always sit close to it, and it was just me there, and I was talking to her about going to Corfu or something. She comes in sweating like some bison <laughs> at the stairs. <laughs> And, and she's there, and because she was showing off, it was like, well, you should have done it a long time ago. I think yeah. she, she annoyed me that she wanted some sort of pat on a on a big hefty fat back <laughs> that she hadn't bothered having a donut that day. Now maybe it's the enemy that just came out because I remember saying it and actually getting home saying to Suzanne, oh, I said this, and I didn't even think I'd, I don't I know what you mean though. From. Sometimes you sometimes you want to go around with people and they're going, oh, I, I need. You want to put them down. You want to yeah. go. I'm, I'm starting out with you because you're going to go straight back to that. You can do this, that. You know. I know you've had a lot. Just inject them in the head. Absolutely pointless. Get rid of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But talking about social etiquette, I was in a um, flying to uh, Edinburgh and I was with um, Matt, my uh, uh, assistant, and um, there was a bloke on a mobile phone across the way. Right, he's going, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get on the plane now. And he kept talking that loudly to people, right? And I was fuming. Then he stopped and made another call. And I, I was giving him dirty looks, and Matt was going, no, sit down, son. And, uh, and then he was going, I am in the airport. And I shouted, he's in the airport. He didn't notice. I was shouting over. I was fuming, fuming. And Matt was just getting so embarrassed. But well, they don't see it, though. And people were looking at me like I was the mental case. Yeah. yeah. But it was so fucking loud. And I moved through to another place. But I wanted to get someone. I wanted to be policed. I wanted to go, right, there's a cunt over there swigging beer, thinks he's a fucking Gordon Gecko player, and he's not. He's some cunt who's got his first mobile phone. Right? But, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. is That is infringing. That is like, that's like passive smoking to me. Yeah. It annoys me when you hear these uh, awful middle class parents talking to their kid loud enough to let everyone know what their kid knows. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, they, they they bring up conversations because they're showing off about the kid. They, they, um, Toby, what's that you were saying earlier about you preferred Beethoven to... Right, okay, if that kid talks about Beethoven and Chopin, right? It, do you know what I mean though? Yeah. It's okay. like people showing off, yeah. thinking that the world is interested in everything they fucking say. That that thing about um, everyone's got access, which is fine, but it's mm. those fat fucking morons on docu soaps that go, "I speak as I fucking th think." You f useless fucking blob of shit. Yes. <laughs> Have an education. Research, yeah. think, discuss, then offer your opinion. And stop your kids chewing on a fucking big ball of fat. Your leg. Got someone specific in mind there? <laughs> I think wearing glasses makes you slightly exempt from that. It's like you don't have to... People mm. automatically dissociate. It's like if I was in prison, I wouldn't have to do that because I'd just be the professor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Exactly, or brains. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, they would, I wouldn't need to be part of that. I'm never a threat, because I never look like I'm going to be a tough guy. So consequently, I live in this sort of parallel stratosphere, where I haven't got a piss and gob. Yeah. Has that got more popular? Yes. 
Has it? Yeah. Well, well, we're doing it in the streets now. Really? It's not like in, avoiding not in Hampstead. It still is, you know. When I walk, walk the only here, person gobbing in Hampstead is me. Jane says, "Don't gob. People are looking." Well, it is. It's your trail that I'm seeing. Then. <laughs> it's like a load of sort of washed-up jellyfish in London. Just big blobs of it. I, d I mean, I don't know how they're coughing this stuff up. I mean, they shouldn't still be alive. Some of them have like organs in them. It's just big lumps of stuff. Talking of the um, English sense of fair play and war, when um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick and uh, versus our our bowmen. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage. That's honour, isn't it? It's almost like it's okay to kill someone, but with skill. But uh, w what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. They're, they're your arms. They've got they've got trained bowmen. They're skilled. The most skilled sort of marksman uh, uh, soldiers in the country. Someone comes along, and goes, "Don't worry about that. Is a crossbow. Just pop it in, put it back. <laughs> Deadly." Deadly, quick, anyone can use it. So now you've got anyone with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. Oh, William Tellen is, they're, they're, he's shooting apples off heads. Yeah. Right? But we did, we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was like sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family. <laughs> that's that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. <laughs> you knew bow and arrow. From Ronco. But what what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I don't, objective I don't is think to that's kill a the place, enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all uppity about someone cheating or having a better Ooh, system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, it's just about rules, winning. isn't it? No, not in a war. There isn't rules. So what about things like the Geneva Convention? It's the understanding that even if we're entering into a war, theoretically, there's a set of agreed universal rules. It's good for both sides, rules. isn't it? Fair play has got well, to come into everything. What's so. extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the, you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, I, I know we were fodder. It was fodder to use up some of their bullets. I mean, it was crazy. But, I mean, it's madness. But in a way, it's it's the gentry who are leading us, seeing you know the average Tommy as a sort of as well, cannon fodder. Of I mean, course, it's of course. And you know, you've got to realise that most of people didn't want to be there. Most of them didn't even understand it. I mean, and if you think of the first and second, you know, they were just wars. You know, but um, I just I can't just can't imagine How what would it'd you be cook, like. Do you think, Carl, in a war situation, you've seen all those films of the? Uh, I and mean, that's the one they had a, had a knockabout and stuff, didn't they? they took, you know, the game of football in that. no man's land. Yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is this is an example of you, Carl, is that you give up too easily. Yeah, you, know, you, you took up you the boxing, you, you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did, I did Crusaders for a, I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's that? Crusaders? Well, he was, my mate, right, he, uh, <laughs> he was, he, he was religious. Uh-huh. And, I, and I, I'm not, really. Um, but no, I mean you believe in ghosts though and shadows pushing people off bikes. But go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. That was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said if you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I love that well, kid. That yeah, he hasn't quite got uh, got the idea of the protection game. No. There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right. So uh, so I went to church with him and that. And then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews. Right. I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly well, go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no. No, we, come no, on. We'll it. come back that's, to that. that you okay. had a tennis ball and some pubes. <laughs> no, in the pubes. pubes. In the pubes, pubes right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the, the it's called, it's the, called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and, uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Brilliant. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. They had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, play table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember, God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play, uh, table tennis and, mm -hmm. and talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. It's I think you'd right. be happy in a Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> 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 you get to clean uh, the toilets there. But as don't well. forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. I mean, mate said if you go for four weeks, four like weeks in a row without missing a day. Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge, you know. And like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. what yeah. Yeah, get down. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, it's like, oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so, so you've got to come again on Sunday, so I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis, it'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. <laughs> who was oh. this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday, it's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. <laughs> And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> They're tricky. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I used to just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. And Brilliant. Yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, were. they won't even notice if that yeah. I'm not like. Yeah, do you know sure. What I mean, that I'm not showing up on a Sunday. So anyway, uh, carried on. It was just this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and no then uh, on a Sunday. <sighs> They found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God, <laughs> the, the he's everywhere. It. <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella, the likeness. <laughs> the fella who like ran the club. He started coming round, knocking on the door, and I saw him coming up the path, and I said to my mum, "Oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders." Yeah. She didn't even know what I was. No, in. she, she, she was thought like, you were off nicking hubcaps and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what I was it's talking about. You've been going to church. You to church. I don't you believe little it. Little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> So, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in, tell him I'm not in. And she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, go, yeah. go on a Sunday. It was yeah. really important that I went and that yeah. I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I, because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right. It was jammed. It was well popular on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit. And, um, they stopped coming round, so I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because they used to avoid hanging around the house in case What sort yeah. of reign of terror <laughs> is this? It's incredible. Right. Yeah. So, so I thought, right. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And uh, I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. God. Right? It was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> That record? So. Next time, he came, next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because it scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's a parable. Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that, that- Your life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so they're, pro go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Is he coming tomorrow? Is he... I thought of another phase. You could you know, just just sit in here talking to you, flogging a dead horse. Yeah. What do you what do you think that means? Flogging a dead horse. A number of people are still amazed by your complete lack of understanding some of these famous uh, sayings and phrases. So, so that's an easy one. Yeah, that's that's like uh, you know, get get a new get a new horse or um, mm. no, he hasn't got it. No one's going to buy it. No, it doesn't mean that sort of flogging.
When you're hitting it. Yeah. Right. So what's the point in hitting it? So- It's dead anyway, so don't bother hitting it. It's absolutely not feeling it's pointless. Anymore. It's a wa- it just means- it just means it's a waste of time. Yeah, but it depends what that horse has done to you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it does. It's that thing, innit, of like, uh, if a bear attacked you, mm. and you managed <laughs> to hit it on the head and it went down, you'd go, and you'd be annoyed, you'd still have built up aggression, you'd give it an extra clout. <laughs> That's Again. extraordinary. I don't know who's compiling this book. Sometimes um, it's worth flogging a dead horse if he did something to you, if he annoyed you. Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you, just to try and in- inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yep. So what- wh- how have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but- but I've- I've never heard of any fish having cancer though, I haven't heard of a- a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> Good point. Okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. What, because it's- it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out or- is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with... It, it, I mean, w- what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. Right. It was, uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. <laughs> she was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of, like, the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And, um, she's in the kitchen with it, and she goes, look at that. Little bee there, she's like, sort of stroking its, stroking its head. And it loved it. <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't struggling, it was just sat there like, cause it must have been like a bit dozy, they get a bit dozy, don't they, in the, uh, in the heat and that. Mm. And, uh, it just stayed there on the sheet and she sort of stroked its head for a bit. And she had to put it out, it didn't go out, it didn't try and escape. It was like, you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> That was that was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had Harry the house fly. What? Said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right. It's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. Yeah. How do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, "Oh, it's back." Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think? It was a pet housefly, as opposed to a different fly every day. Because it was always in the same place, in the corner. But it could have been that something about that, that particular place that attracted flies, rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not- it wasn't harming us, it's just- it just always hung about. But, but how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like, we're thinking another fly's getting a bit of free rent or something. Just, no, but, just let it- let it stay. I don't understand what- But why, why no, no, well, no, I- d- right, okay. You're in a house, right, there's flies, okay? Not flies, fly. What- why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies, at no point was there a crossover period where there's two and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean, it was always just one on its own. And we just thought, leave it, it's alright. I don't know why- why are you suspicious? Why you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, no, no, no. I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. It just was. It's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? Well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they'd made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Glasses. Can I can I take over? Hang here? on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got. There's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses. Yeah. So that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now, aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Right? Yeah. right? It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had 
as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses small enough to fit on a heart. They've put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what do you think of that, though? But they well, did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. But no. why would they bother making glasses for it? And they've got a compound eye. They'd have to make about a thousand pairs of glasses for a fly. It's just, it's just that thing, in it, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When you, no. you know, we are, we're always doing it. <laughs> we're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card, cope with it. <laughs> we're always fiddling, always fiddle about. It's like that bit about, um, uh, what was it? Is th th you see, this is technology going mad and that. Um, they're doing operations on people, right? Um, and instead of inject sort of injecting you with uh, stuff that knocks you out, they're going to hypnotise you and uh, they, they operate on you when you're hypnotised but you're still awake so you sat there awake, mm. you're aware of what's going on around you mm. but you can't feel anything because someone's hypnotised you. Why are we messing about with that when there's nothing wrong with the injection? Well, there are. I mean, it's not it's not healthy to constantly give someone very dangerous. Yeah, very but dangerous you just, time. you just said it yourself there constantly. If you, if you keep coming multiple in, having operations on up, someone, don't be doing multiple operations. Well, sometimes you need to. Why? Because of whatever the complaint it. may be. Yeah, but we, but no, not multiple. Give them one or two max. After two, it's like enough's enough. We've operated on you. We fix that. We fix that. We're not fixing anymore because it's just going to be there's going to be something else wrong with you because you're getting old. Like the world, get on with it. That's that's what I'm saying. Stop sort of ploughing stuff into it. Like I've said before about a car. You know the gearbox is gone. All right, we'll replace it. Oh, exhaust. Well, all right, we'll put an exhaust on it. Oh, the oil filter. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. Picture on the, when I was on the, the plane coming back from here, there was a picture of this new luxury hotel. It'll be, I think, $10,000 a night to stay there. It looked extraordinary. It was a hotel, and the best rooms were built under the water, under the sea. Wow. So it was an amazing, the best hotel we've ever seen, mm -hmm. but surrounded on all sides by glass, and out of it you could see the sea, the sharks, the fish. Mm, I don't think I'd like that. No? But that, again, that's just one of the hotels where it's, where it's over the top for, over the top sake, isn't it? Like, where they have... Twelve yeah. course meals. Well, just have two, but make them bigger, rather than dragging it out. And get, there's a, there's there's the first course. You know, a couple of you know snails. Yeah, it's just uh, for me all that is. Don't eat a snail. Don't have one snail. Have one. Eat one big tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> if you want slow food, don't have there loads of little snails. Here, yeah, there's a giant tortoise. <laughs> Duck into that. <laughs> Feeds ten. <laughs> But, 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 but it's what you were saying before, when you start having to take a risk with food, like the fish that can kill you mm -hmm. if you eat it, don't bother. Uh, there's apparently a delicacy in Japan, again, someone could verify this, where they eat a live little octopus, and it can stick to your throat because it's obviously fighting for its life. I mean, good, again, you don't need to eat a live octopus, what are you thinking? How uh, cruel is that? Well, how fresh do you need your food? <laughs> it's just not, it's not, do you know what I mean? <laughs> But I, re I always remember this story when I was a kid about um, some bloke who, a uh, bit, bit sad, the story, but weird. He had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, uh, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, uh, 
you know, plenty of vitamins and stuff, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was he was fed up because he loved his meat, um, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day, and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up, and that all he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it, he's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out from <laughs> his throat. What? No, he's some. I know, he sounds really weird, but he's something that, that I was told that years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some, some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of, it was, it was coming out waiting for the meat. It was, it was- <laughs> It was sort of dying. Again, it, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from is uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there and throat. Why? I tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I'd go, <coughs> there you go. With that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen, a to your, story. listen to your it's, it's all. There's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers, and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> the other thing that I was told when I was younger about medical stuff and that, um, who's telling you this stuff? My mum. My mum told me about it. Jeez. Because she always says to me, Dad, because he has too much meat, and she's always like, you know, remember the the, the father with the and he goes, yeah, the oh, troll in his throat. throat. But um, <laughs> my gran, uh, she had some uh, wrong with her eyes. And they sort of took them out, and they were just dangling on a cheek, and she could still see through them. They were operating on her. Well, yeah, you would have, yeah. They sort of say, no, 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 no. She wouldn't have been conscious though. No, they were then. Oh, it's yeah. something to do with the eyes, and it? it's like, if no, you, no, it's no good operating on eyes if your eyes are asleep. What do you mean your eyes are asleep? It's like a heart, isn't it? You want to keep them awake. No, so you, keep what do you mean open. you want to keep them awake? What well, heart surgery is blokes awake? Stop talking shit no, what, all your life. What I mean is they don't stop the heart. They, they, they sort of- Well they don't stop your heart because it kills you. Yeah, I know. So what I mean is it's like the eyes, they wanted to make sure they were working, so the, the only way to do it is keep her awake. No it's not, because you don't know whether they're working or not. You can't see what she sees. What you think- it, it, you, you can plug something in and see what people are thinking. It was something like no, that. No, no, it wasn't something like that. Well she could see. She no, said she it was couldn't. really weird. How, how like, you know, you can see- She could see her knees. <laughs> 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 that is bollocks. Alright, this is Yak. Just want to ask if you've got any ideas about future compilations, then please let me know. YouTube.com slash Yak. Hope you're enjoying this. Cheers. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with ink? Yeah. They, they can do it, not with ink. With coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I haven't had that verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. I've, I've seen facts like, uh, the Impala's fur is just nearly the same colour as grape juice. <laughs> which, I <laughs> yeah. don't know what that, who's that aimed at? <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's so... Uh, but what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why Why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh, no, 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 but that's, that's not, not being open-minded. Open-minded open is, is, uh, being open to the facts that, you know, the possibility. Open-minded isn't uh, believing everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it, a lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to- But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form, but a according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But, w but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. He was above a zoo. There would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem with that. The zoo that. hasn't got- hasn't got one percent of all animal species. 
No, but they've got more. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, yeah quite but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. Let, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. But what are you talking about, a zoo? As I said, there's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where you got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in a, in a bad situation. talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right. So there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? They would have been on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big? big. It's big. It's a big boat. Hey, how long, what was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It was a couple of weeks. He probably had, um, the Extreme Makeover Home Edition team. Uh, they, they all chipped in. Probably had Queer Eye for a Straight Guy helping him out with some of the... The, the interior design elements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two <laughs> of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big, because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat, with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, their necks there, two elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on, but when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you, are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question it's not of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. 